Oh, oh. man. Oh, no, I wasn't ready. Terrible news, everyone. Here we are. <laughs> uh, hey there, party people. Uh, welcome to the show. This is Danger Strangers, Defenders of Cobalt, and we're here to uh, run you through Crypt of the Devil Lich. This is going to be the 15th level D&D &D version, so, you know, some 5th ed action. Um, I don't know. Let's just do some introductions. So, uh, why don't you tell me who you are? Plug any pluggables if you want to plug them. And then uh, tell me who your character is, a little bit about your character if you want to. And just for fun, we're going to throw it back old school. Tell me if you had to pick an actor to portray your character in a major motion picture, what actor would you go with? So um, we'll just go in order. We'll start with Bert. Hey, I'm Bert. Uh, yeah, check out my podcast at uh, Blue Magic, B L U M A G I K dot com. And we stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Steam Steel Murder. We do old school Dungeons and Dragons, some first edition on Tuesdays, uh, BX on Fridays. Sundays is Potluck, currently a shadow run using uh, Powered by the Apocalypse. But tonight, I'm playing Bjorn Battleborn. And if he was played by a modern actor today, I got to go with the, uh, the new Momoa Conan. Yeah, because he's okay. a barbarian, man. There he's you go. That's a fit. Moving on down, we got us a Dan. Hey, everybody. Dan with the Defenders. Uh, I'm playing uh, Grimgar, our Twilight cleric, who's pretty much just stacked for healing for the most part uh, and staying alive. You, uh, you're, I, you're approaching this like you think this is going to be a difficult dungeon where people take a lot of damage. And I got to assure you, this is going to be like like Pokemon, like we're just going to be clicking, kicking Clefables and Pikachu's oh, yeah. all day. Some milk run, milk run. Yeah, no, not at all. Uh, you got to watch out for the, uh, you know, the butterflies and stuff. They really get you when you're not looking. Yeah. Anyway, who's playing your character? Uh, I, I figure since I'm a dwarf cleric, I'm sticking with the, you know, what is it, John Reese Davies? Oh, okay. Why not? Why not Gimli it up a little bit? Okay, that's fair. Even though he'd be upset with my choice of weapon which is primarily a want. <laughs> you bring shame. I know. That's All what right. makes it even funnier. Yeah. Moving on down, we got us an Eddie. Hi, I'm Eddie. Uh, I am playing uh, a, t a feral tiefling assassin named The Knight. Uh, I don't really have anything to plug other than everything that Chuck will plug at some point tonight, but... Uh, if I had to choose somebody to play him, I'd probably say Jean Reno from uh, Leon the Professional. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but very importantly, with the voice of Tom Waits. Okay, that's a combo. Okay. Yeah. Swing on, very, on over. Uh, oh. Very hellfire-ish. There you go. Swing on over up at the top. We got us a Jordan. Jordan, you want to make some words? Make some what? Words. <laughs> Oh, words. Yeah, I can make words. Hello, uh, I'm Jordan with Silent PH in the middle, uh, and I will be playing Ristol, the uh, warlock drow from the Underdark, living his best drow life, uh, worshiping Gonador, god of slimes. It's all good. Nice. Uh, this should be really fun. I'm excited. So, yeah. yeah. So um, you got an actor for us? I didn't know. I didn't prep that. I, did, I, I never know. let anyone prep that. I surprised um, it. <laughs> trying to think uh i need like a you you can always go with what we used to do as our default of the rock the rock <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean that's pretty good uh no we'll, we'll we'll try robin williams i'll try a robin williams tonight oh wow we'll okay great <laughs> okay because he can be serious but he could also be really fun uh-huh yeah. yeah wow there we Personal. go <laughs> all right so we got us a jake well, I'm Jake. I'm with the Defenders of Kobold. Uh, likewise, with the uh, stuff to plug uh, for us. Um, I'm sure Chuck will mention all that, but I'd just like to give a shout out to Goodman Games since we're here. Uh, I'll be uh, playing Levi Fairhill, uh, sort of a mix between a barbarian, a cleric, and a rogue. He's going to break into a crypt and smite it with rage and zealot, uh, zealous uh, fury. Okay. And if I had to pick an actor to play him... Um, it would be a, a youngish Dolph Lundgren, but since he's got high dexterity, there's going to be a lot of camera editing for a lot of those <laughs> tricks. 
<laughs> expect a lot of taken fence jumps here. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. A lot of hard cuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Masters so of the Universe, Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren. Ooh, that's the <laughs> nice. That's Dolph Lundgren. All right. Yeah. Last but not least, hiding down there in the corner, there's a Jeremy. Yeah. So, you know, if you like uh, supporting independent artists, there's a comic on uh, Kickstarter called Black Blizzard. You should check it out. Uh, I will be playing a Yuan T Echo Knight. My name is Silas. My alignment is best described as neutral hungry. I'll be doing my best to keep this party alive. And if not, I'll eat them. <laughs> Spot on. You are what you eat, so they'll live forever. Who's yeah. true? Who's playing Silas? Uh, underneath the prosthetics, I would think it has to be Clancy Brown. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that that rough, rugged, ruggedness. Words. Yeah. All right. Words. Words, nice. man. Uh, yeah, and I'm the DM for the night. I'm Chuck, as portrayed by Joey Fatone from My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Uh, it's a joke that only my wife will truly appreciate, but there it is. Um, yeah, so Crypt of the Devil Lich. So on the little splash screen we got in Foundry, there's two little books underneath that Danger Stranger logo. First one, if you hover over, it says, read me. Everyone go ahead and open that bad boy up. Someone's messing around with some tools. I thank you all. Can you open that up? Does it open for everyone? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Where, where is it? <laughs> On the, the big red screen you're looking at in Foundry, underneath the van. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two book icons? Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't see icons two icons there. Icon. Yeah. They're Close. Don't see Almost. Them. Okay. It's zoom fun. out, maybe? That's what I had to yeah, do. Yeah, I had there. to zoom out. It was out. behind the dice rolling. I can just cheat. I'll just do that and make everyone look at it. Ermagerd. So, Change it from read me to read it. Yeah, I see them on yeah, the I, I see stream version. Read me under the journal entries, but that's all I that's see. That's fine. Anyway, uh, let's see. That's going to be... Oh, it's Eddie. It's you. Oh, okay. Read what that for me in your most dramatic way. The whole thing? The whole goddamn thing. Oh, God. Oh, my oh, gosh. goodness. Okay. <clears throat> Get a drink of beer here. It's important to prep. You got this. <clears throat> Just glad it's not me. All right. Uh, I will probably mess this up, but let's go for it. I also ha- <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce some of these. All right. Uh, legend tells of the horrible drow sorceress Chalichia. Born of a drow father and a demon mother, she rose to become one of the greatest drow conquerors ever known. She recovered a powerful artifact called the Shadow Stone and used its abilities to cover a five-mile radius of the surface world in constant twilight, centered on the elven city of Eravero. With allied orc armies attacking from the mountains and drow armies swarming up from beneath, the elven city fell in a single day. At the head of this horrible army was Chalichia. But Chalicia's rule lasted only one year. A band of powerful heroes led by the paladin Valinus penetrated her lair and destroyed the Shadow Stone. Meanwhile, the rallied forces of humans, dwarves, and elves stormed the ruins of Erevero and routed the drow. The heroes used a powerful sword to defeat Chalicia, but it was sundered in the battle. The heroes finally imprisoned Chilichia in an instant fortress in the bowels of her lair. The sundered sword was buried in her lair, the lair was sealed, and a monastery was erected near the site. The monks of the dr- Dawning Sun were charged with guarding the sundered sword and the lair and were to be the lore masters of the history of Chilichia. Now descendants of Erevero's survivors have called for your aid. They have seen many disturbing omens recently. According to the stars, the Devil Lich is close to breaking out of her prison and unleashing her wrath on the surface world once again. You have been sent to the monastery of the Dawning Sun to gather more information on the Devil Lich and confirm the prophecy. But when you arrived at the monastery, you discovered that all the monks were brutally slain. Scrawled on the walls in blood were several prophetic verses claiming Chalicia's return is soon. 
In the monastery's library, you found several tomes open to similar passages, all describing the powerful sword called True Death. This was the sword used by the paladin Valinus to slay Chilichia, and according to the legends, its sundered remains were buried in the Devil Lich's crypt. It appears that someone else has been researching True Death. After finding a blood-stained map showing the way to the original site of the Devil Lich's crypt, you set off to find answers. Leaving the horror of the slaughter at the monastery behind, your band carefully picks its way down a treacherous mountain path. After almost two hours of this tedious journey, you arrive at a cave entrance. The cave mouth is surrounded by stalactites and stalagmites that appear to have been chiseled into angular teeth. Somewhere beyond this maw-like entrance is the crypt of the Devil Lich. Ooh. Very spooky scary. So the first thing I want to show you is during your your look through the monastery, you found reference, you found images of the broken sword, True Death. That'll be popping up on the screen for you now. So that's uh, that's what it looks like. But at the moment, you find yourself standing in front of this, as it's described, maw-like cave. I got a handout for that, too. You look in, you see corpses, bones scattered around. Strange glowing lights emanating from somewhere deep within. Um, yeah. And with that, we're going to move to the first map of the night. Um, everyone's got tokens. Now, the thing is, is I think some of you don't actually have any form of dark vision. I did bring the cantrip of light. <laughs> so if you want to... If you want to cast uh, light... Does being a drow not count as dark vision? Do you not have it? I should. <laughs> you should. Yeah, I clicked okay. on your token. If you click on your token... Uh, okay. I will... do now, Chuck. I got the goggles of okay. uh, vision. I, too, yeah. have the light cantrip. All right. So let me go I ahead. should have dark vision. And, yeah, as a, I've got dancing lights, too. So send it out. <laughs> but... I Let me take a look. Vision. Let me take. We all a look. came prepared for what we may be. Don't oh, can't see in the dark. Time to go home. Shame the Foundry, adventure's over. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Foundry. Are you saying sword pieces in here, guys? <laughs> uh, not that one. <laughs> uh, we looked hard. We didn't find it. Yeah. <laughs> At fifteenth level, we lack the power of creating fire. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> I tried rubbing these sticks together. It didn't work. Nice. Mission failed. I, I just assumed we would handle this Adventure Time style where we just run through the entire dungeon with our eyes closed. That's it. That's it. Uh, uh, Jordan, you got sight yet? This? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I have a nice, uh, it's, it's, what is it? It's becoming a nice white blur now. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you look in, you can see this maw in front of you with a strange light inside. What all do you want to do? I did want to ask if we could have preemptively at the start of our day done Heroes Feast. Mm, high or low? Or do we need to sit and have lunch now? High or low? Picnic. Uh, let's go with low. Oops, I could actually click a die. Hi, oh. you haven't cast it yet. Mm. If you would like, I could create an echo and send it forward to Scout while you do that. How long does Heroes Feast take? It takes an hour. That's why I was curious about that. Because okay. it lasts for an entire day. I, I don't mm. know why I wouldn't use it any other time than at the start. Okay. So what all are you doing? What's everyone doing? Um, I need... How many do we have? We got one, two, three... Oh, perfect. I need all five of you. Or four. Yeah, all five of you. To yeah. write your name in my book. And I've got this giant, like, tome of a book strapped to my back. Is this your death um, note? Are we going to kill ourselves? Uh, I'm not going to well, get no, a little no, junk I, mail I from this, am I? I don't necessarily think you're going to do that, but I it, I mean, we won't know until you sign. So go ahead and he'll pull out like a, a quill and, you know, prick your finger. And have your, oh, right with the blood on your finger. That's fine. 
Um, but what I'm doing is this is gift of the protectors. I could put five people in my book. And then uh, when you drop to zero hit points, you actually go to one hit point instead. Oh, nice. And then your name vanishes Ooh. or something. That's pretty awesome. And and your soul is gone. Magically take care of you for a little bit. Okay. Is anyone not signing? I will not sign as I don't think my uh, path of the zealot barbarian would be too keen on signing things in blood. <sighs> It, I mean, that mean, I can sign my name twice. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> the good, like, good oh, Lord fingers. Ganador does not uh, approve of people who try to cheat the rules. So, I mean, I wasn't so much trying to cheat, just I don't want to waste his blessing. I'll tell you what, if you go down to uh, zero and come back to one, <laughs> I'll let you rewrite your name. That's oh, very nice. Yeah, I'll definitely it's going to be awkward name. in the middle of battle, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I've got an echo for that. He signs with just a, a line, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a claw. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I will also sign, but I will sign it literally. I am, quote, the knight, quote. <laughs> okay. The knight of what? No, just the knight. Very well, Mr. Knight. And actually, I realize I haven't just, even signed this, so name. I'm sorry. You're not getting your double sign since uh, our friend here. And I'll sign my name as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'll get my own protection. It'll be great. Uh, Chuck, how tall is the ceiling away from us? Like how how? So the ceiling stretches up uh, about thirty feet high at its highest point in the arc. Okay, and there's uh, stalactites hanging from it. Yeah, and you can well. see on this map, uh, you can see those circles there casting shadows. Are those yeah. stalactites and mites mm -hmm. acting as the pointed teeth of this entrance? <clears throat> do we do we see any sort of light in this in this tunnel ahead? Somewhere deep inside, you can see a strange, glowing light, purplish light okay. coming from within. Okay, uh, while everybody else is uh, doing their thing, um, I'm going to go ahead and fly up to the ceiling and uh, kind of disappear from the group. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dan, were you going to try and talk everyone into having lunch? I mean, that's up to everybody else, I guess. An hour seems like a long time. I'm okay with it. I can, I can create an avatar that can head up to 1,000 feet out and just have them scout for a little bit. Okay, set the plan. Sure. Sure. No one <laughs> he really answering, wants so to sure. use it. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I have other spells I can do instead of that. So. Okay. So, yeah, you all start setting up your picnic. Uh, so that way uh, Grimgar can, uh, you know, create this hero's feast. Uh, Silas, if you want to go ahead and activate your... Hujima, what's it? Mm -hmm. Did my music stop? All right. I will. Basically, it takes me an action to do so while it's doing it. It's kind of similar to like whenever somebody uses a familiar. I'm not going to be able to see or hear myself while I send it off and away. But basically, you just see like the top layer of skin rip off of Silas and form like a hollow echo that just starts moving forward. Oh, wow. Okay. So well, this that's not is disturbing at all. A visible, tangible thing. Yes, it's very much intentionally meant to be sent out, so it can it can be the thing that gets killed instead of somebody else. Sure. So while Dan's doing this feast, uh, Silas, does this thing walk or float or? I it it just said it because the regular echo can be placed in the air, but I'm gonna have it walk normally. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I basically. Yeah. My intent is to have this thing be what gets sent into a room before us. Like, let the disposable echo get killed. Okay. It or starts trigger traps. moving in, walking between these stalactites and mites. Um, go ahead and give me a uh, give me a perception test using this thing. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So perception. Stop. I, I said okay to the feast. Stop pestering me. I'm trying to focus on like I said yes to the feast. Okay. It's lovely. So I'm distracted. Okay. So yeah, it's how much HP does this thing have? It only has one. 
Okay. But I can see whatever it sees, and I can just create another one if we need to. So I'm going to move your token. You see, it goes to step between these stalactites, and as soon as it kind of takes a step between them, mm -hmm. you get the instant sensation of, like, pain coming from this thing's feet, and then it cuts out. Probably trapped. <laughs> so, good news, bad news. Uh, my echo is dead, but I found one trap. And, uh... uh one down, uh, a million to go. Well, you know, slowly, we have an hour, I figure. If okay. I'll just keep sending echoes to slightly <laughs> different spots in the mouth. Uh, is that what you're going to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay. I mean, just Silas is a very pragmatic. Constantly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Silas is cold and pragmatic. Eat some food, send a clone. Eat some food, send a clone. You find that it gets just a few steps between or beyond, maybe just a step beyond that line I just drew on there. And then you probably have it start kind of like paying attention to what it's doing. And you can see as soon as it steps on the ground in that area, the, the ground all of a sudden spikes just erupt up from underneath and just pierce this thing from below. And then they settle back in. Nice. Looks like they're made of stone. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll, I'll relay that. And part of the other reason I was doing that is I'll use an ability called Reclaim Potential, where if one of my uh, clones gets killed, I can take some temporary HP as I absorb some of the magical essence back. Nice. Okay. Hours up. Everyone gets the benefits of the Feast of Heroes. Yay. Dan, what is that? Uh, I will just drop it in the chat here. Hopefully I don't roll horribly. Ten. No, that's okay. All right. So everyone's hit points increase. Permanent hit points increase Which by ten for the next 24 hours. Yep. You're also immune to poison, immune to being frightened, and advantage on all wisdom saving throws. Nice. nice. That okay. is uh, probably By the deal. way, since we've been, it's been an hour, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Since it's been an hour, while I was sitting up on the ceiling uh, out of sight, I was uh, casting Find Familiar as a ritual. Okay. So at the end of this hour, as you guys are finishing up feast and, and we're kind of all wrapping up, uh, an imp okay. just sort of falls from the sky and lands at your feet. Okay. <laughs> Still got shouting his bath in some towel other and brush. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's just shouting in some otherworldly language as I sort of drift down, gliding with my wings to uh, to meet him and kind of snap at him to shut up. So. You've had your, your lunch. You're ready to move in. What's happening now? Who's doing what? Uh, um, I'm moving forward. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And Same I'm going to carefully look at these rocks and see if uh, it, it's magical or, or how are they popping up? Uh, go screen. ahead. Give me, a, uh, give me a perception test. Since you're kind of aware of what the trigger looks like, you can go ahead and take advantage on this. Let's give it a shot. That's an 18. And do you want to... Oh, did it come with advantage? Oh, 18. Okay. Yep. Um, I'll tell you what. You can see that the terrain, the ground, it's not quite enough to reveal all the secrets, but the terrain kind of in this area, it's got a really odd kind of jagged gravel texture. But you don't really get anything else from that. Does anyone want to jump? It's about ten feet. So you there, imp, go go fly over. See what's going on. Can imps fly? Yeah, I believe they if have it wings. Please, you, Mister Knight. Your uh, yeah. <laughs> your thing can fly, can it, Jeremy? Yeah, I can just pop. I can create it up to just fifteen feet away and up just and over and down. Okay, is that yeah. what you want to do? Sure. Sure. So my, my imp will also uh, go invisible and then fly over. Okay. So as you send out these familiar and familiar-like creatures, um, they, they see a handful of things. Um, four braziers 
are burning in the room, kind of towards the back of the room, letting off this weird kind of purple pulsing light. At the back of this cavern, you see this large, intricate double door. Uh, let me show you a picture of the door. Uh oh, the door has a picture. That means it's dangerous. Yeah, it's never a good sign. So you see this oh, large oh. double door at the back of this chamber. Um, there's these four braziers huddled down next to one of these braziers, kind of like half tucked behind a rock. Um, you see in a mass of kind of torn and bloody robes, there's this gaunt form of this ragged human. Um, his features are drawn really pale. Um, he kind of looks up and around at the sound of these creatures moving around. Doesn't necessarily see anything, uh, but he goes back to whatever he's working on. Well, now what? Let's go and get to it. Uh, Not everybody go at once. I know. I will <laughs> hail the, the creature in the robe. So you you call out a greeting to this man, and you can see he kind of pops up, standing where he's at, kind of hunched over. And actually, let me. I'm going to show another handout because so you can get a better look at him. You see bloodied, tattered. Deathly gaunt, drawn skin. Uh, and he calls back to you. Uh, why have you come here? Uh, do you seek the power that lies in the devil lich's crypt for yourself? Or would you seek to destroy it? You're all fools either way. Uh, you're fools. For the dangers are great. You must prove yourself to me. To the crypt. To the Chalitia. For only heroes of great metal could dare confront the Devil Lich. I curse her. Curse her. And he goes We're back. We're just trying to find some broken pieces of a sword, man. Uh, <laughs> so are, are you, I mean, you could leave. Like, No, I'm bound here. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that sucks for you. Um, like, uh, and I'm kind of looking for like, I don't know, a chain around his foot. I'm like, uh, so, I mean, I don't. You ju I'm just I don't looking. See it. You don't see it. No. <laughs> yeah. Are you bound here like uh, magically? By the wills of my order. Guard oh. this place and pass on the lore. Oh, who do you work for? The monks. I'm, yeah. I'm the last. The last of my order. That checks out. That's well, what's going to happen if you if you die? I fear that. Our information will be lost. Well, well, let us have that information, and and we'll go into the crypt, and then we can come back and and we could join your your order. It'll be great. You must prove yourself. How to do me you do that? Hang on a second. Okay how how would how would you like us to do that? Give me just a moment. I've lost. I'm about. Something. I'm I'm ready to send at least five of these people towards you. To prove that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take. I'll a have look. a great time getting to you to give you a big old hug. We've, we've got an abundance of cones here. I have some cooking tools. I could make you a nice broth. He responds back. The shards, the shards of true death, are the key. And it goes back to kind of setting behind his rock. You can hear him muttering, scattered about on levels three. Encased in a crystal prison without a door. But only the first. There are five more. I hold the next shard of true death. Will you prove yourself to me? You know, they always make the names of these things just... Oh, I could... Can't you just call it something kinder, maybe? Do you... Do you need us to kill you? Or is there another way to prove ourselves? Yes. Enter. 
Okay. Something about a key on the floor. I'll just, I'll be standing on this side of the line and I'll have my echo move adjacent to him. Your echo comes up to him and he pops up and he kind of eyeballs it for a second. And then all of a sudden, it's just a flurry of strikes, almost faster than what an eye could track. And your echo is just splattered across the ground. What do you see? That's just being rude. We tried to ask you a question. No more questions. Only proof. Enter. Oh, fine. I'll step over. Uh, Watching out for those rocks. Okay, cool. Yep. It's only about 10 feet, so I'd imagine... I'll Unless, just leap it then. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they... Just give it a give it a jump. I mean, in theory, we're badass heroes at this point, so. Yeah. I th- I think you're muted, Jordan. Oh yeah, sorry. I was like, I'll jump and I'll uh fall on my face and then I'll get up and be like, I meant to do that. I meant it's okay. fine. If everyone <laughs> everyone move your token to where you're gonna be jumping to, and then roll initiative. Ooh. Okay. okay. I I should have thought to ask for two tokens to make my thing easier. I'm sorry. That's all um, right. This is easy so enough to do. I'll move. Initiative? I'll move where I'm putting the echo at, basically. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Is That's there perfect. An initiative button on this thing. Uh, yes. So if you click on the little fist tab, then next to your name, you'll just click that D20. Oh. Okay. Nice. Um, I have advantage. Should just roll it twice. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Roll it once there, and then just roll. Well, it. Well, I rolled a twenty, so I guess that's fine. Okay. Well, actually, no. I've got a huge bonus. I'll roll. It looks like it's adding the initiative as a advantage because you're doing two d twenty k. Yep. So. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Neat. Dan, Dan, were you handing me that advantage as well on initiative? Yeah. By default. Okay. Uh, Eddie, I've got... This is still populated with your old token, I think, Eddie, but I've got it loaded up. Oh, okay. In... It's also showing my old name in the yeah. uh, in the chat. Yeah, mine did that too. I might re-import my character real quick. Oh, it's just I I imported these tokens before the name changes, so re-importing your, your character sheet won't do anything. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I just Shazbot still. Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> Future scenes. I'll put the new tokens out there. That gotcha. way, the right names will show up. Uh, All right, okay. Gotcha. So Eddie, you're the only one I'm seeing that doesn't have initiative rolled for me. Uh, I manually rolled it. I've got a 14. All right. All right. Levi is up first. Uh, uh, I don't see a thing to smite. Uh, see the the this, old man this, this guy, the old man guy it's, down here. So I just smite him. Right, smite him with I, great fury. I will move uh, to the back of him. So as to actually, I'll move uh, to the back of him. Uh, plus uh, an additional bit, because uh, whips have reach, do they not? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, nice. So now I will attack with my uh, with my whip. Sure. So then if you just click attack on what popped up in chat. Oh, okay. So yep. it doesn't roll it automatically. Not in this system, no. 30 to hit. That is Wee. definitely a hit. And then if you want to click on that damage. Take that, old man. Boom. Plus another because uh, I've got sneak attack for my one level of rogue. Very cool. All right. 15 all together? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, my gosh. I don't have my tool that lets me auto-apply damage. It means i got to do math tonight. Oh, oh we're no. in so Rot much row. trouble. That's inhumane. I know. Okay. Who makes games like that? Well, it's my fault. I didn't do the thing. All right. Anything else, Jake? Nope. All right. Bjorn, you're up. Okay. Um. Well, I guess I will. Okay. Where's the brother Nicholas is there? Yep. 
Okay, well, I guess I will step forward and not rage yet. Just just feel it out and uh, take a whack at it with Warhammer. Sure. Or, yeah. If you want to click damage. Uh, click or damage. attack, I'm sorry. Where, where is that? Sorry, In the chat on In the... where the dice rolls normally show up. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yep. Uh, so click attack or click damage? You need to click attack, attack first. Click okay, attack. Then if you hit, you hit damage. Normal. Oh, yeah, that's a hit. Are you wielding that one-handed or two? Uh, one. I've got a shield in the other. Okay, then go ahead and just click damage for me. Uh, that wasn't a critical, was it? No. 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 Okay, so normal damage. Oh, points. wow. Woo. And I have a second attack. Go for it. Take that, old man. 26 is a hit. Another 19. Oh. That's fantastic. You're putting some hurt on him. Okay. In the back of the chamber, all of a sudden, dropping down from between the stalactites on the ceiling, another monk falls down and then runs around. Doesn't make it far enough to do any attacks or anything, but uh, he wasn't alone. Oh, he lied. He, he lied to us. Uh, is what it Ristol or Ristol? Uh, Ristol. Ristol. Yeah. Ristol, you're up. All right. Uh, Ristol will move. Uh, I think I can move. Yeah, like here. And uh, this new guy, uh, what's he What's he looking like? Just like another monk? Another monk, super pale, super, super gaunt. Pale, super hurt, huh? Um, and I will attack it with, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pull out this amazing tentacle rod that I have. Nice. And, uh, I'll point it and three tentacles will jump out and hit him. Cool. So I'm going to, I'm going to attack three times. All right. So, uh, let's do a 25. 25 is a hit. 23. 23 is a hit. And a 24. <laughs> let's all just cover three all of them numbers. are definitely hits. Nice. Um, and so it's gonna, it's only 3d6, 3d6 damage. Blood only 3d6, he says. So eight we're gonna do eight damage. <laughs> uh, but he needs to make a constitution saving throw, DC 15. Okay. Con saving throw. Uh, 13. He does not right, pass. So fails. Um, so your the creature speed is half. Uh, it has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws, and it can't use its reactions for one minute. Uh, wow. On each of its turns, it can either take an action or a bonus action, but not both. So it's kind of like slowed as it's like oh, okay. grappled That's with so these good. tentacles. Very cool. Uh, and that is my turn, yeah. Another one of these monks drops down from the other side Gosh. and then charges around the corner. Once again, the dropping uses some movement as movement, of course, uses some movement. Taking us over to uh, the night. Too many monks. <laughs> uh, all right. So when we entered this, I jumped up on the ceiling again. So yep. I'm actually above. Yep. Um, trying to think. What do I want to do here? So this one right here is grappled, correct? Uh, Not grappled. No. Slowed, basically. This Not one. Grappled, just slowed. Yeah. Okay. And then this one is fresh and this guy is hurt. Um Yeah, so I'll I'll go ahead and make an attack on the first guy from where I stand uh, cuz I can throw my dagger. Sure. Um All right. So Ooh, you know, I wonder if I want to do that. I bet you do. Yep, I do. I do want to make an attack on him with my dagger. So, okay, let's uh, take this. All right, let's attack. So it's the knight's right knife. It's a yes. The right knight knife. Or is it a knight right? Knife? <laughs> That's right. Right, knight. right knight. Knight rider knife. Uh, uh, does a fifteen hit? And which one are you throwing at? The one who's 
tangled up or no? No, the old man. That's that's oh, uh, no, that is a uh, miss in combat right there. That is a, that miss. Is a miss. All right, then I will uh, go ahead and burn my bonus action to uh, summon it back to my hand. Cool. And uh, I will go ahead and make another attack. Okay. Twenty-seven, 27 is it? Yeah. Hits. All right. Damage. Twenty-one nice. damage there. Oh, crap. And then I need to do my damage for sneak attack. Another sixteen. Okay. And yeah. that will end my turn. Okay, this guy's in rough shape. We kick over to Silas, who's listed as Silas Echo, but Silas, it's your All turn. Right. Well, I'll start off. The Echo's already there, so I'll let him start the uh, business. Get off the first attack. One T is a miss. Ooh. Okay, I respect that. Try again. So was an 18. Man. Look at me, just whiffing away. Yeah. As well, you do. As you Silas do. Silas isn't hungry yet from that feast. <sighs> yeah, he's okay. full. That's the problem. Okay, so then I will move him, move my echo to where he can. Yeah, I'll move my echo there. And I will move here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jeff says that you need to close your eyes before you attack. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Thanks, Jeff. I, that's should, clearly the the Caius way. You should probably also lead with, like, I don't want to hurt you. That's a well. good point. That's the problem. I do want to hurt them. That's why I'm failing. <laughs> okay. I should, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll put myself in position and just stick there, I think. Okay. Uh, so who do we got? We got Bjorn and we got Silas. Is that Silas's Echo? He's the going. Echo's on the bottom and I'm... Yep. I... Uh, he's going at Bjorn. Let me check something here real quick. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, Silas, he punches you. He's attacking me Stop or Silas. Bjorn? Bjorn, my bad. Bjorn! Punch. Does a 16 hit? No. All okay. right. I'd like to use my Sentinel reaction to attack him for doing that. Okay. Watch me fail again. 22 is a hit. Thank goodness. Nice. Swig away. Put 25 on him, and now his movement is zero. Okay. He will deal with that. Uh, but he's going to keep punching Bjorn. Good deal. Bjorn, 28 hit. Oh, yeah. All right. I need you to give me a constitution saving throw. Sure. Is this a spell by any chance? Uh, this is a monk ability. Okay. Uh, constitution save. How do you do a save in this? Uh, so you just click on one of these stats on the top of the character sheet. So in this case, click on constitution, the con. And choose uh, saving throw. Yep. Um, I have it on it. Do I get advantage from the feast thing? Dan? Sorry. Uh, it's only on wisdom saves. Wisdom. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Normal. Uh, so that is a fail. You are now stunned until the end of your next turn. Uh, but he's going to keep punching you. 12 hits, that's a no. And That'll hit. That's going to deal... 9 points of damage. Mm -hmm. And let's see. He's going to go ahead and use a bonus action for a flurry of blows and throw out two more attacks on you. Oh, that's crit. Roll the last one. 
Okay, so you're going to take... What is that? 18 for the first attack. And then another 9. So... Okay, got yeah. it. 28. Yeah. And that's the end of his turn. Uh, so now we're at not Chazbot. I don't feel like we're uh, quite in danger of getting wrecked yet, so I might just try and put out a little damage here. So I'll target the uh, old man there uh, sure. with Sacred Flame and see if we can just knock him out here. Okay. So there it is in, in the box for you. Um, It's a DC 21 deck save. No. He takes if you want to hit that damage for me. Now, as your sacred flame kind of shines down and puts this damage on him, uh, you can see that this strange purple light kind of glowing in the area kind of almost dampens in a little bit. It doesn't feel like it's quite as, got as much oomph as what you're thinking it should. Okay. Dang it. This place is meant to make me suffer. <laughs> All right. Anything else? No, I think that'll be it, uh, since I only get one action. All right, Levi, you're up. All right, I'm going to attack the old man again. Where's... There we are. Attack. Imahula. 24. 24. Is it? And since I get an extra attack, no, I just remembered that. Uh, so, 20. I don't think that hits. Uh, 20 does not. Okay, well then I will damage uh, him with the hit that I did land. Plus an additional sneak attack damage there. Sure, give me just a second to apply that. Okay, so how much damage is that all together? Just nine? Yeah, nine magical. All right. Anything else? Nope. Bjorn, we'll you're up. Uh, can't really do anything, so <laughs> just stand here. You are stunned. Okay, well now at the end of your turn, you're no longer stunned. So this creature, who is attacked with the tentacle whip, its movement is slowed, it can't do reactions, and what were the other effects of that? Sorry, uh, it, ha it basically has a slow condition, so half speed can only take an action or a bonus action, not both, and can only do one attack. Uh, but at the end of its turn, it gets to make another save to see if it can break free. Okay, so it's going to move. It's not going to move far. And then it's just going to take an action to take a swipe at you and your crazy tentacles. Nah. Uh, 25 to hit. Yes. Oh, no. 10 damage. Okay. All right, but it is your turn. Uh, oh, my turn. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. I got this guy right in front of me. I'll I'll do a primal savagery. Oh, nice. So, uh, Sprout them claws. Yeah. So everything is about slime with this guy. So he definitely has like some amorphous arm that comes up and gets into some nice claws, and then he <laughs> swipes swipes down at it. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, let's see if I hit. 22. 22 is a hit. I just remembered I need to make that guy's deck save. Oh, six damage. Okay. So good. Ah. I love love cantrips. Okay. They're so fun. He's still <laughs> affected by your whip, but uh, okay. yeah, he takes that eight damage. Uh, six damage. Eight six damage. My bad. My throw. bad. <laughs> All right. I'm really good at D&D, &D, guys. So <laughs> I, don't, I make really awesome, super powerful characters now. Uh, this <laughs> other one runs up beside you, uh, and it's going to make a... It's gonna make two claw attacks. Um, yeah, actually it's gonna claw at you first. This is a 17 hit? Yes. All right. Oh. Nine damage. Okay. But then it's going to bite you. Ugh. Oh no. Uh, it's only eight to hit, so I'm going to guess that is a definite miss. That will miss. The knights. All right. <clears throat> if 
first thing I'm going to do, uh, bonus action, I'm going to go ahead and summon my knife back since it was sitting yep. on the floor somewhere. And I will go ahead and make an attack on... You know what? He's getting double teamed. I'm going to go after the one that just bit. Okay, sure. Uh, so let's get up here. Twenty-eight to hit. I mean, guess is a hit. Yeah. Damage. Twenty-seven damage. Twenty-seven damage. Now I should point out that that is fourteen uh, necrotic damage specifically. I didn't do that before. Don't know if that makes okay. any difference. It does. So fourteen necrotic. Hang on, I gotta do math. Yeah. 14 of that is necrotic, 13 of that is just piercing damage. How much was the piercing? 13. Okay. Oh my gosh. What are you doing to me, man? Okay, I got it. All right. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is go ahead and throw one of my just normal off-the-shelf daggers. Okay. Since my knife is on the floor now. Let's go. Dagger. 20 one hit. is a hit against that one, yes. Okay. 12 okay. piercing damage. Now, it definitely seems like this thrown dagger didn't do as much damage as you were hoping for. But it did some. Silas, you're up. Okay. Well, I was really hoping to get some more work done on the old man there. He's still up. Uh, well, I'll try and do my part. I'll try to do my part a little bit better. 19 nope. is a miss. 15 oh, oh my goodness. is also a miss. 21 hits. There you go. Okay. It's going to be one of those nights. That's all right. That is okay. Right. You got this. I got this. As your axe swings down your glaive swings down cuts into his flesh he says this shard is as safe as can be <laughs> <laughs> and then he turns into this mist and drops to the floor and starts kind of dispersing throughout the cave I don't like it all right that was really weird, old man. And uh, then I'll move. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I, I can't really do it on the overlay, but what I'll do next is I'll move my echo. How tall is the cave here? Is it about 30 feet at the tallest? I'll put my echo directly above Ristol's head. <laughs> Just have him attack down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of fun. That way I can kind of tank for him a little bit. Uh, Not Chazbot. I guess uh, in this case, I'll maybe move up and uh, go ahead and make an attack with my uh, my fancy axe that I have instead. Sure. So, let's see where are my regular attacks. I should have looked for those. I didn't expect to use them. Shame, shame. Okay, there it is. Attack. That's not an axe at all. It's a warhammer. It's a warhammer. Oh That's my a gosh. Uh, but against that one, uh, an 18 does connect. Okay. And I get to do a couple things here. So I'll do the regular damage, and then I get to do my divine strike at least once every turn for a whole five more radiant damage. All right. Kind of the same thing as before, yeah. where you're this divine bit of energy doesn't seem to do as much hurting as what you think it should. That's why I figured I'd, I'd take the 10 bludgeoning and 
<laughs> over reduced. Yeah. Uh, Levi. Um, I will move. Uh, I'll move to this location with a nice little five foot gap between okay. myself and that uh, person to my west, and I'm gonna make a swipe at it with my whip. Sure. Attack number one. Fifteen, 15 hits. hits. Nice. Oh, hey, it does hit? I'm gonna make attack number two while I'm at it. Twenty-five. Twenty-five also hits. Excellent. Here's the damage for one. All right, nine. Damage for two. All right. And here's the sneak attack damage. So 24 total. Okay, very cool. Anything else? That will do it for me. Bjorn. All right. Um, so the guy in front of me is down, so, right? Correct? Yep. So I'm going to go over here and put this torch out or purple flamey thing. Okay. How are you putting it out? Uh, I'm just putting my, my shield down on top of it. You put your shield and you hold it there for a second. As you lift your shield up, fire's still going. Like it didn't even phase it. Mm, okay. What's it being fueled by looking inside the bowl? Looking inside, it's uh, you can see there looks like some common stones, but the magical flame is just coming out of it. You don't actually see anything that it's burning. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one, it's going to... You attacked it last, Jake. It's going to turn around, move up to you. Gonna take a claw attack at you. Twenty-two. Ooh, that just barely hits. Jeremy, you were about to say the magic words. I was about to say I have a chance to try and hit it before it can move away. Okay, go ahead. If you succeed, does that stop its movement? It does. Okay, cool. Nice. Eighteen does hit. It does not move up and make an attack against you, Jake. 25 damage. Goodness gracious. No, you sit. 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 Um, in frustration, where it was going to attack at you, at Jake, it's just going to turn around and make that claw attack right at you there. 22 to hit. Miss. Wow. Okay. Nice. He's a sturdy boy. I'm a jerk. Bristol. <laughs> Uh, yes, can I, I would like to cast Eldritch Blast, but I want to shoot the supports of these, um, flaming brazers. Sure. And see if I can, like, knock them down. Sure. So I can fire three of them, so I'll, I'll go for this one, and we'll see if I hit, I guess. Okay, sure. So. Uh, ten, natural one. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah. Twenty-four. Twenty-four is definitely a hit. Uh, and then I I want to see... I don't know if I need to roll damage, but there's eight damage. Uh, Do I knock it over? I don't know. Yeah, so you shoot out one of the supports holding this. And this one here tips over. Uh, this is... Okay. Yeah, it's fun. This is fun. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, no. So... Not like this. Everyone, well, let's see. As this thing falls over, it crashes to the floor and it just explodes in this purple light. Um, so let's take a look at that again. So Jake, Silas, Bristol, uh, and the two vampires. Everyone, make me a... Everyone, if I said your name, make me a dexterity save. Any chance this is a magical effect or just general jumping out of fire dexterity? This is a magical effect. Okay. Ooh. If you fail, you take 11 damage. If you succeed, 
you take five. It's not kind of damage. It's necrotic damage. Ooh. Hastiest of damages. Probably not. Just something. Yeah. I don't know if it would be hasty. No, it's probably horrible. Okay. All right. Um, that was. Are you gonna keep blasting? Uh, no. Um, no. That feels that feels dumb now. So okay. I'll I'll stop. <laughs> I mean, it was a fair call. Yeah. Good I just thing I'm you mixing didn't things put up. that one out while you're standing right next to it earlier. <laughs> All right. This one here. Uh, it's gonna go for you, Dan. That's fine. Uh, claws at you. 16 hit. That'll be a miss. It's going to do it again. And also a miss. Um, and it just, it hisses at you. But then Sweet. the turn passes to the knights. Cool. First thing, bonus action. Pull my uh, dagger back into my hand. Sure. Uh, the magical one. Right. The useless, boring one I don't care so much about. Okay. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is my imp should be in the square right here below. Uh, sorry, I was just trying to keep track of where he was. Yeah, not a problem. He should be right about there. Um, he's going to go ahead and make, uh, he's invisible, but he's going to go ahead and just barely touch this guy right here. Okay. As my action, I'm going to deliver through him. Uh, where is it here? Shocking grasp. Sure. Uh, and I will I'm say these, uh, the oh, past act of transferring the spell will end the imp's invisibility. Uh, but yeah, if you want to go ahead and give me that attack roll, uh, seeing as it's not going to see uh, it, you can take advantage on it. This thing is not going to have any kind of metal armor on, correct? No. Okay, I didn't figure. As a monk. Yeah. 16 hit? Uh, 16 does hit. Awesome. Let's do some damage. 13 lightning damage. Okay. And then uh, the next thing my imp is going to do, or actually, nope, that's, that's, I should have rolled initiative for my imp, but I assume he just goes around my. Yeah, I'm just, he's going roll. on your turn, yeah. Okay, then I'm just going to have him go ahead and fly up 30 feet. No, okay, he's done. fly up to the ceiling. Um, yep. Very cool. I don't think... I think that vampire is going to be a little too surprised to take a opportunity swipe. But we go to Silas. All righty. Well, I'll have my echo that's like just like an inch above Ristol's head go to work. Yeah. Uh, would you say the one to the north or the one to the uh, east is more damaged at this point? One to the east is looking a little rougher. Okay. I'll focus fire on it then. Burn him down. Yeah. All right. So we got a 22. That is a hit. We got a 27. Uh, that slays it as you cut through this. Yeah. Or sorry, that was in a... I was just rolling oh, all three okay. attacks. I apologize. Okay. Uh, all of your attacks hit. Okay. Then I will bring the thing back up so I can roll damage. Get him. Okay, twenty-six. Still slain. Excellent. I'll put the other. Do the others I still hit the second one? Yeah, I'll let you move you after the first attack. Yeah. Okay. You can move your so other then, attacks to the second one, and they'll still hit as well. So that one will do 28 Ooh. damage. Uh, also slain. Okay. Overkill. Excellent. <laughs> Maximum overkill. All right. So initiative concludes. These three crazy monks have been slain. You're now standing in this cavern. As you look around, you can see that there's like murals and stuff like carved into the walls. Also, covering the walls are paintings and or, uh, phrases, cryptic phrases. You're guessing that this crazed monk had put on the wall. Uh, if you take a moment to kind of look over any of those before we move into anything else, uh, I'll just go ahead and 
just show this to everyone so you guys can see what these different phrases they kind of re uh, repeat as do some of the other phrases that you heard him mutter out loud <clears throat> okay is it possible to like take a look at what he was busy doing over in the corner there yeah. um he had a small rat it looks like and it's partially torn apart oh looks like there's bite marks along it he's just having Ooh, a snack goody. want to check out his body sure yeah and if there's anything special about his eyes uh, his eyes? I don't know if there's anything. Uh, didn't he turn to mist? Oh, what? yeah, he oh, did turn to mist. mist. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so he didn't leave anything this body was standing either? He did not, no. That was a good catch. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, all three of them turned to mist when they were slain. Alrighty. My, uh, imp and I will drift down towards the floor. I'll pick up my other dagger, and, uh, I'm gonna use prestidigitation to go ahead and clean the blood off of both my daggers before twirling them and putting them away. And then my imp is gonna go invisible again. Okay. I call dibs on the rat. I earned it. <laughs> yes. You said there were a bunch of murals, right? Mm-hmm. Any of the murals depict him? None. Okay. Okay, so no crazy people on murals. No. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be reading these out loud, probably. Like, like, my eyes are the windows to your soul. I mean, it sounds like he's trying to write some pop lyrics, but it's just not working out. Hmm. He's really got to get in touch with the uh, modern culture. Yeah. And I want to move forward to this door. Sure. See what's going on. Once again, these giant double doors. And there's a skull with a snake thing very, yeah. very slytherin okay uh, let's see yeah you move past the four large cropper razors one of them's on the ground um this is from the information that you read in the monastery the fabled por uh, portal of the damned uh, these two large reinforced copper bronze doors standing about 10 feet high and 10 feet wide each in stark contrast to the colorful mosaics adorning the walls. Uh, there's a large circular skull relief of a slender humanoid skull with a snake running through the eye sockets that overlaps the doors, seemingly keeping them sealed shut. And is it also made of metal, the, yeah. the skull and snake? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll knock. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Nothing happens. It's okay, challenge dense by the reverberation. <laughs> All right. We have a specialist that checks for traps. <laughs> Do we? No. I don't think so. I mean, I can check for traps and see if we've got anything there. Yeah, I, I can't make my echo, like, try to manipulate trap, but I can just make it walk into the door. If you want to just see what happens, it's the ultimate trap checker. Yeah. Yeah. It is. That's like one of the number one things my guy will do for you. Just send forth the shadow clones to trigger things. So, yeah. If I you do, send I, your shadow clone to walk into the door, boom, just bounces off of it harmlessly. I do have a thaumaturgy that I can always use to open unlocked doors remotely. Okay. <laughs> you going to try it? I don't think many of them are going to be unlocked, but it's free. So, I mean, why not? We can we can all step back a little bit and then I can pop that off and sure you step back everyone kind of clears the space mm -hmm. as uh, Grimgar suggests and uh, you use your can trip and it doesn't even budge doesn't seem like it did anything <clears throat> all right so it's not unlocked <laughs> the snakes in the skull does it all look like it's carved from like one piece or does it look like they're separate pieces it does look like it's one solid piece. Well, the door's too hard to open, guys. Time to go home. <laughs> well, the gods don't close a door without opening windows, so... <laughs> and if the eyes are the windows to the soul, then maybe we disable our eyes somehow? It's just, disable its eyes. It's just like Mystery Men. 
Mm-hmm. I will go up to the uh, to the purple bra or the uh, brass brazier that's still going beside the one that's out. Yeah. And I'll draw a flask of holy water and pour it onto the purple fire. Fire goes out. Ooh. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. I will uh, repeat this process with the last two copper braziers. Uh, you do, and it does. Thinking right there. Look at the big brain on Mister Fail. So all of the braziers are out. I'll close my eyes and walk towards the door. You close your Arms eyes. Out. Eventually, <laughs> your fingers brush up against the metal of the door. Nothing seems to happen. What are you wanting to do? I will cast light on my boots. Your boots are illuminated. So pretty. <laughs> Can just uh, go up and examine this, the door really carefully yeah. to see how it seems to be sealed or locked. Like, can we see a bar on the other side? If you want to give me an intelligence test or <clears throat> perception or. Oh my gosh, I play fifth edition. Investigate. investigate. Thank you. Yes. Investigate. Yeah, got none of that. Okay, well, here we go. And if anyone else wants to help him in this, <laughs> feel free to join in. I Yeah, I will. <clears throat> with a uh, roll too. 23 for me. Who's actually has some intelligence, so maybe I'll. So you can see that there appears to be absolutely no mechanical mechanical components to this door. Um, You can see it doesn't quite connect in the center, like maybe if you run a thin blade or something like that. Uh, It's thick, maybe like six inches thick, and eventually you feel it like hit something solid directly behind it, maybe like a seal plate behind it, you're not sure, but it doesn't just pass clean through. Mm. Uh, Mr. The Cleric. Yes. Um, I've forgotten your, your character's name. It's right? Gar, that's all right. Uh, would you, perhaps if we uh, use some of your your silver flames your radiant flames in its in the in the skull's eye sockets so that its eyes would open and it would be illuminated and see yeah we could try that like drop uh, a sticker flame on it or something yeah sticker flame in its eyes see if it so yeah if you want to go ahead and but i'll also stand far far away you drop your sacred flames (laughs) i just want you to put the damage out there okay okay the door it almost shifts, just like rattles just a little bit, but it doesn't seem like that's enough oomph to get it to do anything. Let's try just brute strength. Can I just go up the door and try to just push them open? I've got a 29 strength. Yeah, absolutely. You want to give me uh, <laughs> yeah. an athletics test? An athletics? Okay. Yeah. Oh, good lord. Wow, 28. So you, you push and it doesn't seem to have much give with all your strength so you switch to to pulling it and you can feel it starting to give just a little bit you lean into it a little harder you give it a little grit and eventually it breaks free and these two huge double doors swing open and you can see directly behind it is a stone wall etched into it are the words be careful who you trust as all of a sudden an explosion of this dark energy flies out from it uh everyone go ahead and give me a con save is this in a magical effect yes it is it is a magical effect advantage on this very cool Fifteen. all right 18 is the number i'm looking for so if you fail you take 20 necrotic damage. Ooh. If you succeed, you only take 10. I'm glad I had that snack before we got in here. Speaking of which, I don't know if anyone else needs to take a five minute <laughs> and uh, get a little bit of rest and bandaging in, but I can certainly stand that. So short rest is an hour. Oh, it, uh, rules, sorry. Yeah, Wrong no, system. fourth edition, it was five <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Did the... 
Did the wall break open or no. did it just No, okay. No. So it's the doors are open and then there's just a wall now. Yeah. A wall that says be careful who you trust. Boy, already we're not smart enough to open the door of the dungeon. Yeah. So yeah, you're looking at this bare wall with these doors standing open. <clears throat> braziers are extinguished uh there are mm. still mosa mosaics covering the rest of this cave interior did we not obtain the map they gave us the interest of this from that same dead monk's order the monk that lied to us etc etc is there any information it. in the map it just points you right here well what else can we see from these mosaics, maybe? Yeah, I'll follow the mosaics. I'll touch them. I'll try to, like, see if there's, like, sure. I don't know. Uh, I want wisdom tests for whoever's searching over perception specifically. Okay. I am good at that, I think. I'm just not used 20. to the sheet in here. I'll see the others searching and see if I can't find something. Sure too. thing. I um, don't. It's going to be an overwatch and something in case something happens while everyone's looking. Okay. <clears throat> oh, so, hold on. I did not roll perception. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, hmm. uh, Ristol and Grimgar. Eventually, you find a chunk of these, the mosaic wall that looks a little off. Um, it's a chunk of wall that depicts a large skeletal knight wielding a scythe and then the blade of the shaft intersects with a gallow hole like you know the hangman that comes over and they mm -hmm. form almost like this square arch and it looks like if there were ever going to be a hidden door that maybe this is it okay uh, I might point my thaumaturgy at it and just lip. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I make sure. Go ahead and I move can... where you're standing while you're doing this. Um, and where would, where would this mural be at? Yes, you need to know that to get that information. It is... <laughs> right there where that red mark is now i figure i'll probably be like back a little bit from it okay so Actually, Ristol, a you to the side here too you also discovered this so grimgar announces he's going to try and thaumaturgy it where are you at you're still yeah, back over there? here and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna take out some ointment and and slather myself up yeah. and i'm gonna heal myself 2d8 plus two as you thaumaturgy all of a sudden the door swings open and this knight scythe comes swinging down in this arc right where you would have been standing if you would have pushed this open. Hooray, thaumaturgy for the win. <laughs> um, following behind this arc is this blast of energy. Oh, gosh, uh, but I might not be far enough away. You are. It only goes out. Yeah, just uh, I'll mark it. So the blast of energy was like there so you're all far enough back and you op open this door and you can see that it leads inside you have found the entrance to the crypt of the devil lich <laughs> pray fool me once shame on me. <laughs> uh now what i'll send some dancing lights in to see what's going on sure you send Thanks. your dancing lives in you watch how far out can you send those uh, 120 feet, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, as your lights yeah. bounce down this hallway moving, you can see it's a long hallway, probably 60 feet. And you can see it opens up it way down there into what looks like a larger room, but you're far enough back. You know that there's a room down there, but you can't really see anything that's in there. Well, do you want me to send in a lackey to soak up some damage? Uh, let me sneak ahead first. Okay. See what I can see. After without you? Without necessarily alerting anybody. 
Uh, well, before we head in, is there any maintenance that anyone needs to do? Any hmm. potions, healing spells, anything like that that needs to happen? I'm down like 30 some odd points, but if we don't have a lot of heal between us, I can keep going. I'm probably down to as much as most of you guys I don't think with, anybody so. actually like spent money on anything because I think yeah. we just picked our items that we were allocated, so I don't know if we have healing potions or not. I'll tell you what, you're 15th level adventurers. I mean, probably has to be. <laughs> I'd imagine we do, but... Uh, why don't each of you can go ahead... Go ahead and take three potions of greater healing. Are they in the, uh, yep. the module? So if you click on what looks like the little suitcase up along the top, just do a search for potion of greater healing. It'll bring it up and you can just drag those right onto your character sheet and it'll add them to the right spot. Do that nice. three times. This is so awesome. This is so easy. Yeah. Uh, it's item directory. I don't remember what it looks mm -hmm. like on the player yeah, side. It's the inventory. fourth icon over between the little people in the book. Uh, so yeah, if anyone wants to chug some potions to try and get their hit points up some. When you click on it, then you'll just click the healing button. Yep, you got it, Bert. Um, I'll just use the one for now. Okay. <coughs> Eddie. Oh, I got that note still up. We don't need to see that. You sneaking ahead? Uh, yes. Go and give I'm me a stealth. Ahead. I'll right. be a bit behind Eddie since I can see in the dark as well. Okay. I'll say you hang far enough back that you're not going to the night. It's a 17. It is a 17. A, that one is still okay. 17. <laughs> you are moving ahead, and eventually you come up to this circular room. Uh, let me make sure I say the right words here. The smooth black walls of the circular chamber <clears throat> shimmers with iridescent reminiscent of the surface of like an oil slick. Uh, it's about 40 feet in radius. Uh, there are eight doors spaced evenly around the room. So you're coming through one of those doors. There's several piles of bones that litter the floor, including two face-down complete skeletons adorned in what looks like ruined armor. The centermost section of the floor has this gold and silver inlay uh, set into the stone. Uh, you notice as you move in, the it's chilly in here, and there's a whiff of burnt almonds. Uh, but it's illuminated by several glass spheres set into the ceiling, each housing a variety of colored points of light. Um, it's really kind of strange. It's flickering with all these shadows and strange lights, kind of giving rainbow-type hues to the, the strange walls. Um, the, the orbs pulse slightly. You also see moving around, there's two shadowy figures just drifting silently throughout the room, slowly moving from door to door. Every now and then you see the swirling black arm form as one of the figure reaches out to one door. Its hand passes right through the handle. Its shoulders uh, slump almost in disappointment. And then it moves to another door. Okay, is everybody else back close enough within 30 feet of me or are they further back? So you're right there. Bjorn's about 30 feet back and I think everyone else is still in the other, the, the entrance cave. Yeah, my feet are glowing so I'm staying back so you can scout yeah. ahead. And okay. I have disadvantage um, on stealth so I'm not blowing okay. that. <laughs> With yeah. my uh, awakened mind uh, ability I will go ahead and telepathically relay this to Bjorn, everything that I see. Okay. So Just Bjorn. kind of telling him in real time. Yeah. I'll just kind of turn and murmur back so everyone else is behind me okay. knows what's going on. The party is informed. Yeah. Do we want to like watch them and see if they uh, feel any different about any one door or another first? Or uh, Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I, I'd i like to go talk to the, the skeletons. Do you have a 
magic for that. So I'm like, I, I'm like crouched down and you that. just walk yeah. right by. <laughs> like, uh, normally they're not too talkative once they're dead. No, they're, this, they'll talk to me. Don't worry. They'll talk to me. I'm, I'm just they'll going talk to, to Ristol. You do that. I'm going to stay in the other room. So I'm imagining I'm just like crouched down, sneaking about by the entry to this room. And I'm just like, I am the knight. I am the knight. And he just <laughs> walks by me, just like casual like. Wonderful. Breaks out a cigarette, puts one in one of the skulls, sits down, and just has a chat. <laughs> Tell me your life story. I mean, I'm sorry she left you, but you gotta move on. You're a skeleton. <laughs> so is everybody moving in or just Ristol? I'm I'll still gonna be lurking to... nearby just in case something goes yeah. down. Yeah. Um, I'll maybe move up to Bjorn, but not like in. Okay. So I'll some move of you close. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, going to stay within charging. Okay. You know. So, Ristol, it sounds like you're going in alone. All right, I'll, let's do it. I'll put I'm the echo loud. up there next to you if you want. Ristol Jenkins. That way you've got at least a sentinel <laughs> beside you if something yeah, goes we'll, wrong. Yeah, we'll, I'll take an echo. That's good. One second. So, Ristol and the echo move into this chamber. That's the name of my 80s cover band. That's a beautiful name <laughs> nice. for us. As soon and as Chuck, I will uh, just as since I'm still waiting by the entry to this room, if anybody else has moved up a little bit closer up that hallway, I'll just relay in real time to them what I'm seeing happening. OK, <laughs> if nothing else. It may be entertaining. So. All right, this complicates <laughs> things. It's fine. Everything's fine. Yep. So, Ristol and the Silas Shadow move into the room. You can see the two shades moving around, these two shadowy things going from door to door, not paying any attention to you. Okay. Um, you can see the two skeletons lying face down on the ground in ruined armor. Um, go ahead, do what you want to do. I ask that you please move your token as you do it. Uh, oh, yeah, that's that's the, the thing, isn't it? So let's see, I got to be within 10 feet. Uh, what's this in the middle? That is a an emblem, almost think of like a compass. <laughs> it's a sphincter. Edge <laughs> <laughs> carved into the floor. There's the, what, eight points, I'm not counting them inlaid with gold and silver you can see that each one of these points is lined up with a door yeah mm. okay um and the floor is oily these floor is stone the walls this strange black smooth material kind of reminds you of the like the the pearlescent or whatever it's called of like an oil slick okay and it's got these strange globes of light <laughs> throughout right, the right. room or on the um, ceiling throughout the room. Okay, uh, let's let's cast Unseen Servant. Okay. As a ritual, it'll take ten minutes. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna send. Uh, we'll we'll name him Hank, over there, to uh this skeleton, and I'm gonna have Hank pull that skeleton towards me. Okay. So your Unseen Servant is named Hank. Yeah. Get over here. Bless you, Hank. You're doing good work. As Hank is walking across the wall, let me see if I've got a good token for I mean, Hank. He's unseen. I think it's a perfect representation when we don't see anything. That's else. true. You win that one. <laughs> <laughs> All Touché. of a sudden, you give Hank your instructions to go drag that skeleton over to you. Bring that skeleton. It gets here. maybe like 10 feet from you. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the glass globe, one of these glass globes drops, like, right here in front of you. And this noxious-looking fumes kind of starts coming out. You're far enough back that it's not affecting you, but it doesn't look great. Uh, okay. And that fell from the ceiling? One of these illuminated domes on the ceiling with all these different points of light inside it. Yeah. All right. Are they hanging by something, Chuck? It looks like they're set into the ceiling. Can you just mm. walk along and just pop them all down? That's, that's what that's I was fun. thinking. But they're, I don't know how high up they see. are. 
That's a question. Or maybe at least along a path that we're, we're you know, taking, if all of them would be too I do, as, as part of my thieving stuff, I do have a crowbar. Uh, the ceilings are 30 feet up. Okay. Well, let's, let's see what he's got in plan here with his, with, with Hank first. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, I assume Hank's gone, or is he still there? Uh, he take damage. Yeah, Hank's gone. Okay. Poor Hank. Yeah, he, was he lived how he died. Uh, <laughs> invisible. Um, <laughs> this is so overkill. I don't really want to do that. Okay, uh, I'm going to move to where Hank died. Sure. And I look up. Is another one going to fall? No. Okay. I'm going to okay. zigzag over here. Okay. Nothing happens. I'm going to uh, zigzag over here. So real quick, Silas, your echo's walking again. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. All of a sudden, the door to the room slams shut. Oh, I'm going to kill myself. So, Ristol, you look back and the door is closed. The okay. rest of you... Hang on a second. I got to click the right thing. Oh my gosh. Right thing. What are you Stakes doing? Mistakes were made by the rest of the party. <laughs> There's just a faint little. Oh. Like half of us are just like the at door the doorway. Hits my nose. In. I don't know. I was kind of mm. ready for something to happen. Yeah, I think mm. I would charge that door as soon as it closed. Uh, so I'll tell you what. Give me a dexterity <laughs> save. Well, I'm as in try to break it. I don't know that I. Okay. Would, well, no, I mean, I'll make the dexterity okay, save. Okay. If you want to try and make it through, you can give me a dexterity save. If you want to try and break it, you'll give me an athletics. Um, mm. Wow, um, and it's a, a stone door that. You know closes. what? I'm going to say I'm not. I'm not overly dexterous, so I'm going to say I'm, say I'm probably not fast enough to get in there. But I think I will ram into it. Sure. Okay. So I'll give you an athletics. Let your anger be your key. Yeah. Yeah. Seventeen. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, you ram into the door. It gives a little bit. But all of a sudden, you leap back as the door frame on the inside of the door starts shifting and uh, moving. If if I can, because I have to worry about losing line of sight with my echo. If it looks like I'm going to lose line of sight, I can use a bonus action to swap places with it. Oh yeah, go ahead. So that that way, Ristol's not alone in there. That's dope. So. All right. So nice. basically, it's kind of like very Ninja Scroll style, where like the the skin just drops hollowly, and then somehow a, a new serpent, <laughs> new serpent man arises from it. It's not so, gross at all. Not gross at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, you jump back, Bjorn, as all of a sudden it starts shifting, and so now you're looking at the interior of like this smooth stone wall. Now, Silas and Ristol, you don't notice anything. So, Ristol, you make it up, other than the door closing. Do you still move up to the skeleton? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead, just for... Well, this is a little tough. We're going to go bounce back and forth between who's in, inside and who's why, outside. Why split the party? Why That's split just, the party? Why do we do that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so Ristol and Silas, you two are inside. What are you doing? Good, it's my party. Uh, so go ahead. Yeah. What do you no, want? no, you first. I can cast Speak with Dead um, as as a uh, as much as I want. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna lay down to this <laughs> corpse here, this skeleton, and uh, some of my slime will drip over his bones, and then you'll see an influx of air into his not lungs as he ha can answer five questions. That I sure. Proposed. So something odd happens as you do this. Okay. One of these shades, one of these shadowy creatures, drifts over and stands right next to the skeleton as you're doing this. But you're free to. Yeah. It doesn't do anything outside of that. Okay. So if you want to ask a question. Oh, okay. Uh, how did you die? You see the skeleton's mouth moving as the whispering voice comes out of the shade standing next to it. Oh, okay. The traps in this room. We couldn't escape. We couldn't figure out how to get out. How long were you in here? Weeks. 
a it's a terrible sign. Um, what causes the things on the ceiling to drop and fall? We think there's hidden tiles, like pressure plates on the floor. And that's what causes it to drop the globes. And there's also some that we think makes the room move. Mm. Uh, are, are you uh, the, the, the shade above this skeleton? Is that, is that you that as is, well? Are you, that is me. Uh, and then I think this is my final question. Is there a way to, to reunite you with your, your bone self or, or push pass you on, I'll say, to the next life? Get one of the doors to open back up and we can leave through there. Okay. All right. Gonador be with you. And I'll, <laughs> I'll let him okay. fall back to being bones. And uh, this shade goes over to another door and tries to reach gotcha. for the handle, slumps. Too bad we so didn't bad. let them know to leave when the door was open. <laughs> so the I mean, ooze thing, that's very gross. But, not but I respect know. it. Um, I th- I'm going to create an echo and I can have it within 30 feet of me if that's about the height of it. I yeah. think what I'll plan to do, just give me an idea of the direction you want to go and I'll have my echo just hover at the ceiling directly above you and we'll take it nice and slow. And if something does fall down, it'll hit the echo instead of you. Well, I th- that that is very good. But if we just keep rotating this thing or dropping stuff, uh, rather than triggering everything, maybe we should learn how to control it. Well, you're smarter than me, so that's what I'm that's saying. That's true. Thank you I'm going for to pointing put the that out. I love to, to hear that. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna look at the floor for some uh, pressure plates or things like that. And yeah. I'm actually really curious about the the um, sigil in the middle here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, looking for pressure plates, I want a perception test. Um, and then, same thing, I'll lump it in because you're going to be inspecting the floor. Oh, Ristle, that's fantastic. 23, yeah. Um, you spend maybe 20, 30 minutes searching this floor. And we're going to cut away from you what? and go back to the rest of the group. And when we come back, I'll tell you what you find. So the rest of you are now watching as it looks like this interior room's like a drum rotating mm-hmm. around. Um, what do you all want to do? Is it... Um doing this often while we're on the outside or just Continuous. one time continuously it's slow so, but it's moving i guess um i'm gonna get ready to run in there are there as it's rotating or is does the wall all look the same or are there doors that show after up after like a minute or so you do see another door starts coming into view I want to go back out into that area with those plinths that had the flaming things in it. Yeah. Are they pretty sturdy? They're brass. I mean, they're 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 hefty, yeah. I'm going to grab one and bring it over. Next time a door comes through, I'm going to bram it in and cause it to jam. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to wait for a door. So give me just a second, and we can make that happen. Uh, they got the immovable rod after all. <laughs> that would be fantastic here. <clears throat> you down a step? Nope. Ah. Gosh. So, yeah, it's about a minute. And eventually, you see another door come up. And you ram the door open. So as Ristol and Silas are looking around on the ground, all of a sudden, the door bursts open. And your friends come charging in. And you see Bjorn take this... uh, I forgot, Brazier. And kind of jam it there in the door. That way the door can't slam shut again. So let me throw some tokens out for everyone who's here now. Friends! I mean, acquaintances. Father, <laughs> people. Whatever you like to be called. People I've met along the way. Yeah, and as this door kind of tries to slam shut, but the brazier catches it, 
but then you can see the entire room still rotating around slowly. Get in! <laughs> it's enough for everyone to get in safely, but you can see it kind of catches and you can hear the grinding and eventually it just shears this brazier in half. Uh, but that door is still kind of flapping open a little bit because the half inside the room, it's keeping that door from closing all the way. So there is one door that's partially wedged open. Chuck. Yeah. So I sat there and I waited. Um, would it be reasonable to say that I got a count as to how long it took for that lineup to happen? Um, yeah, that's fine. So... So as soon as I jump in, then I'm going to start keeping track. Okay. It's about a minute. It's yeah, like right. about so, a minute. <laughs> yeah. Mark, we could probably see which door it is because the door's broken probably. Um, yeah. And then just keep track of time. So, yeah, it looks like, uh, I'll go ahead and mark it. Door six down here is the broken door. That's the door you came out of. But now that it's partially wedged open, you can see this stone wall slowly moving. Okay. Well, if we can see it. As Ristol, you probably get the idea to tell them maybe not to move because you realize that the floor is covered with pressure plates. And let me put some marks on the map to show you where they're at. You fools, don't move. The floor is trapped. Well, and I probably would have seen enough before the door slammed shut in my face. Uh, to uh, would it, relay that to would I be You'll all be to boobies in these booby traps. <laughs> Don't move, I say. Stop. Would I be able to potentially reasonably like just mark on the wall going by us with chalk? Well, the door is wedged open. So are you wanting to do on the inside or where the, you're at the wall we as, see it's by, as it's moving by? Yeah. As it's moving by us. Yeah. Um, I figure I'll just take a timer and just like mark one. Okay, so Two, you and Bjorn are now keeping three. track of the, the time as this moves around. Uh, and I've now marked on the map. <laughs> Chuck, did I just get incredibly lucky as I walked around it? Yes, you did. To get to that. That's yes, amazing. You did. <laughs> amazing. Because you're like, nothing happens. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, the... I, hacks. So funny. I figured since you put your unseen servant, you would cast it in front of you. So it landed on B. Mm -hmm. Or this, this first one here. And then as Silas walked across... <laughs> He nicked the edge of that second yeah. one, but yeah. But I just, that's so funny. That's that's pretty remarkable. It's D&D, &D. Okay. I love it. Well, I'm not a smart, I, I learned from my mistakes. I'll activate my boots of levitation. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> just hover like an inch off the ground. You're all yes. in this room. Uh, Ristol's able to point out where all these pressure plates are. Bjorn and Grimgar are still counting. Uh, we're going to say 30 seconds in. What do you want to do? No pressure, but I'm counting on you to lead the way. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look at the, the center here. The asterisk. Okay, so I'll give it to you with just a perception. You look at it. It is perfectly symmetrical. Each point is the exact same distance. You know, gold, silver. It looks like maybe if you carve this gold and silver out, it could be worth a decent penny. Uh, but doesn't seem to do anything. <clears throat> it's not like a compass or anything. It's compass-like. It's yeah, not but, moving. Yeah. It's not giving any different indication. It's just each point points to a specific door, but there's nothing to differentiate it. So there's no moving parts. It's not indicating one way or the other. You know, it's just saying very, very plainly, there's a door and there's a door and there's a door and there's a door. Clear around. Uh, what if I stand on it? Nothing happens. Uh, that was very brave of you, though. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Stupid is what I would have said. But, <laughs> uh, what time is it? Do you do you know before we entered? Well, you all Friends? showed up midday, had an hour lunch. The fight outside only took a handful of minutes. Probably Check another 20 to 30 here. minutes to search. I don't know, you know, right. mid-afternoon. I'm going to put my, my short arm and my long arm and try to, like, make the time and I'm going to be the arms of the clock in the middle of this thing. You start keeping the time that way. It doesn't do anything, but now everyone knows what time it is. Okay, well, I look silly, so I get off. Uh, <laughs> you, we, you get an inspiration for looking silly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what is the ceiling made of here? So you look up, and it's about 30 feet up, and you can see all these globes, like half globes, like fixed into the ceiling. 
looks like kind of like clouded glass and there's all these points of light moving around inside. I think like fireflies, but they're all different colors and they're all letting out all this light, illuminating this room. You're getting probably about five seconds until you think something's going to happen. Like we make it back around, you mean, or? You're not sure. You're counting. It took about a minute for another door to show up. Okay, that's why I'm marking chalk on the wall. So we'll know if we come back around or not. So what's the plan? Uh, yeah, you like want to run over seconds. to this? Should we all go to a door? Uh, actually, and try to if, open if it? we can see the wall through the door, yeah, and we know um, like roughly which one we came in, are we seeing any other uh, hallways so other far, than the no. one we came through? Okay. Now I will say that it's about this time that. A hallway does come into view. It's narrower than the one you came in through. So it is different. Okay. But it's the exact same door you came through, but it's opening up to a oh, narrower yeah. hallway. It's another way. You all I want will to jump run in? through. Okay. Yep. I'll go. Um, mm. I want everyone just go ahead and give me a dexterity test. You can do acrobatics if you've got it. Um, yeah. Low DC, yeah. so don't feel bad if you roll low. Other than getting cut in half. Yeah, I mean, low Actually, bar to jump, to but it's really bad if you don't make it. Yeah. Is this Can considered just... a trap? I do have advantage <clears throat> on dex checks if it's uh, a trap. You know, and I would give it's functioning trap like in this, so go ahead. Can I cheap it out by manifesting my echo in there as a bonus action and then swapping with yes, it? Yes, you can. <laughs> wow, that's cool. That's a very cool power. Okay. Everyone. It's, it's, I'm a very one trick pony, but I will work that trick. It's a damn fine trick. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going with a DC of eight. Did anyone fail that? I just barely made it. Okay. You all leap through at the last possible moment. You are now in a hallway. A hallway that, let me make sure I'm going to say the right words again, because I tend to say dumb things. Okay. I don't have a map for this room, but we don't need it. Eventually, it, it's this hallway. It's not a real long hallway. You see that you've all made it through this room. And actually, the two shades follow you through this door. But as soon as they get past it, they just dissipate. Hmm. <clears throat> should have should have took their skeletons with them. Yeah, I mean, you didn't even check. I, I mean, I don't get very far without my skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> so this dismal room before you, it's dimly lit by a few glowing spheres in the center of the ceiling. The ceiling's about 50 feet up. Now, as you look down this room, rectangularish room, uh, there's a wall. So you're looking ahead and there's this wall that goes up about 40 feet. Um, it separates you from the eastern half of the room. You can see on the top of this wall, there's like a ledge that goes further. Um, now, along this wall, you can see where you're standing. There's, it looks like discarded um, devices, things that were used to climb this wall. Uh, you see a knotted rope dangling from a grappling hook at the top of the wall. You can see a... A narrow uh, rotted rope ladder. It's kind of off to the left, moving up to the top. And you can see over on the other side, towards the right, you can see there's been pittance set into this stone face of the wall. Sounds like they've gone about it every which way then. Any, anybody got uh, cool flying abilities to get them up there? Or I can, in a matter of sorts, yes. It does the uh, switcher room. Yeah. Cause I activate the, the levitation boots, put the, the echo up there, swap places, move the echo up, swap places, move the echo. So it's not as you know, nice as flying, but it gets the job done. Okay. So are you gonna do that? <laughs> yes. Uh we'll say <laughs> It's like 80 feet to this wall from where you're standing, and then okay. 40 feet up. Is that outside of your range? 
Well, because I can just keep swapping with it, and then I have boots of levitation. So okay. just wherever I end up at, uh, I swap with it, and then I'm levitating wherever sure. I swap to. You swap. What is it 30 Fly feet out? More, you send yes. your flying skin creature 30 feet out. <laughs> you swap with it in your boots of levitation. You send it further out, and eventually you make it to the base of the wall. Um, can you... Well, I guess if you're going kind of at an angle, you get clear up to the, the top of this wall. It's a thick wall, maybe like a foot thick. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that it's just... Instead of a platform up top like you were thinking, it's just down that same 40 feet, and you can see an opening, a passage on the other side. Throw a rope! Or yeah, can, we just, um, can we just knock it down? <laughs> knock a hole in it? Yeah. It's a foot thick stone wall. I mean, uh, it'll take some work, but I mean, the answer is eventually going to be yes. I, I mean, I'm sure Bjorn probably could. But just in case, let's toss rope. Yeah. I did bring my stonemason's tools with me, guys. Okay. <laughs> so where are you tossing the rope from, Bjorn? You're on top of a 40-foot wall. Your party's 80 feet from you by the entrance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll I'll dangle it back, or I'll, I'm not sure exactly how best their stuff works. I, I know the knight can kind of spike kind of spider climb or fly a little bit uh yeah so i can do either of those i can fly and i can also walk along vertical surfaces and ceilings so either way you can traverse this in a more you know <clears throat> yeah so i've got a very I'll send my way imp. of doing it i'll send my imp ahead um okay. since he's invisible and he'll fly up to kind of the top of the wall and just kind of do oversight Keep okay. an eye on yeah. things on both yeah. sides. So, and then, uh, yeah, I'll just kind of look around to everybody else. Like, how do we want to do this? Do do we want somebody to run a, a rope up there? And I mean, Jeremy's already up there. Or, yeah, yeah. Right. I can, Jeremy's like, start... up there, and like I said, there's already a knotted rope hanging down. There's a rope ladder that looks kind of rotted, and then there's climbing pittens already set into it. So, climbing the wall, there's options, or you could have Silas up at the top of the wall, dangle a rope down, and people just shimmy up the rope. I will use yeah. the pittance. Okay, so as um, Levi, you set out across this room. Um, Levi makes it to the base of the wall, and Levi turns around and starts waving for the rest of you to come on over. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll climb up. Okay. So I will also climb up. Okay, so all of you make it about 10 feet across the floor. This is the same thing that happened to Levi. Now, Silas, you're going to see this, and the imp will too, as you watch the entire party walk across this floor to the base of the wall and turn around and start waving towards the door for people who aren't there to come over. Now, what the hell are you doing? Everyone else who isn't Silas, you made it about 10 feet. And all of a sudden, the floor you were walking on, just, it was like it was an illusion. It turned to smoke. You don't know. And you fall, crash hard into darkness, utter silence. Um, all of you are about to take some fall damage. Oh no. Oof. Uh, Let me. Oh, you, oh, you. Let's see. Seven damage. Each of you takes seven fall damage. So this is Bjorn, Grimgar, the Knight, Bristol, and Levi. I did not move forward. I was just waiting to see what happened. Okay, so you so watch. What, so what do I see from the door? You see the rest of your party walk across the room and turn around and start waving at you to come over. Doesn't hear oh, that's interesting. So I can see them. So I can see them walk across the room and wave back to me to come over. But I'm also in contact with my imp who sees them walk across the room and wave back to nothing because my imp can't see well, no, me. No, 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 you're still there. If you didn't walk across the room, you're still by oh, the door. okay, I see, I see. So so from both my point of view and my imp's point of view, everything's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly up to the top of the wall. I'm not going to step foot on anything there. Okay. Because so, it's the most direct path. Silas and the Knight, you're rather confused as you call down to your party members. Well, come on up. But they're all just standing there waving at the door. Just doing the, the come on <laughs> over wave. Uh... Hmm. Is this a cultural thing? Not right. I tell you what, I've got uh, a bag full of ball bearings. I am going to take out a fistful of ball bearings, and now that I'm flying up towards the top of this wall, I'm just going to kind of chuck them out and let them spread out over the floor and let them fall down to the floor and see what happens. All of these ball bearings silently land on the floor. They don't bounce. And then they all, on their own accord, roll to the base of the wall. Um, the little arms come out of the balls, and they say, come here. <laughs> <laughs> come over here. Come on, come on That is so, some weird shit. Stepping away from Silas and the Knight, Bjorn, Grimgar, Ristol, and Levi, you're in a pitch black. There's no light. Even though light on my boots. <laughs> there's no light. Oh. Dang. Those it. of you with dark vision, still pitch black. You don't see anything. You don't hear anything. You maybe you move around a little bit. You you bump into your friends there and you, you know, reaching out in pure darkness. Um any feeling for how far we fell? About twelve feet. Oh, I'm going to jump <laughs> and see if I can see if I crest the top of the sure. hole. Sure, you can jump. I'm presuming you've got a you. You're just goddamn strong, so you can jump that high. As you jump, there's this hard barrier where your head passes through, and you see the floor, and all of a sudden, the hearing comes back, and then you fall back down. Now, all of a sudden, Silas. And the night, all of a sudden, Bjorn appears on the floor <laughs> and walks over to the base of the wall and starts waving for everyone to come on over. And there's no one over there, but they're waving along with everyone else. Come on over. Again, is he in there twice now? Yeah. Yeah, because he already walked. There's across. now two Bjorns. I right. will tell everybody that's in the pit that, uh, you know, roughly this many feet up is the whole i'm going to just keep jumping into and like grasping out like you know throwing my arm out until i can feel an edge sure. a ledge to grab not a problem <clears throat> uh but as you're doing that what the hell <laughs> finally okay uh that's going to be ristol you feel something cold and wet and slimy brush against your arm <laughs> is that my other arm and it <laughs> burns oh does it burn Ooh, um, uh, um okay you're gonna take some damage you're gonna take nine points of acidic damage uh, all right. and you I can feel it acid, okay so. that's good to know as it kind of brushes against you you kind of step away uh, but you get this sense that it started moving towards you again. As Bjorn, you finally find the ledge. And now you're holding on to it. Now you're yelling at everyone else underneath, come yeah. over here. But you, as you yell, there's no noise. They don't hear. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to pull myself up. Yeah. Um, so I have the only rope. question I have now, Chuck, is how many Bjorns are there at the uh, There's like eight Bjorns now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, Chuck, oh. I have rope and a grapple. I'm yeah. going to fish. I'm going to fish. Okay. <laughs> Just drop it down there and kind of wave it around and see if it can hit anybody. That's <laughs> nice. a great idea. Um, let's see. So, finally, oh. Silas and Grimgar, you see a Bjorn crawl out of the floor. And then you see another Bjorn spawn and walk across the room. So Bjorn, as you look around, you can see like the entire party and plus like eight of you are on the far side of this room at the base of the wall, waving you over. Right. 
So I know who didn't come with me forward. So I will call out to the rest of the party, say, it's a trap. <laughs> just just stay where you are. <laughs> so Bjorn, you toss your grappling hook and your rope out. Uh, I'm going to roll a die. Uh, it's going to be... Levi, is something hard hits you on the shoulder. Go ahead and take a point of damage. All right. And you kind of feel at it. You can feel it's some kind of metal instrument, grappling hook, attached to a rope leading straight up. But you can't see it. You can just feel it. I will uh, reach out into the darkness for anybody else. High or low? To low. Uh, you're not able to find anyone. Uh, but, Ristol, something slaps into you. <laughs> uh, what's your AC? 15. And it hits. Come on. You're not giving... Oh my gosh. Hang on a second. My thing didn't work. Um, I like the, the name of this creature that I can now see. Yeah, so yeah. Fine. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as you take 27 points of acid damage. Ooh. Is that halved for me? Yeah, you're resistant to acid, so yeah. I was honestly thinking I might just try and cast a spell magic. Sure, go ahead. Um... So, but yeah, there, uh, Levi, you can't feel anyone, but this rope is here. What do you want to do? I will uh, clench tightly to it and give two tugs. So, Bjorn, you feel two hard tugs on the rope. I pull up. <laughs> you're, you're strong. So you just pull, and all of a sudden, Levi comes out of the floor, and another Levi spawns next to him and walks across the room. <laughs> yep. I immediately just drop it down and try and fish everybody up that I can. So, okay. oh my gosh. As soon as he's out. Um, Are there pittance still in the, the wall? Uh, you're on by the entrance. You're not by the oh, wall. Oh, okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Ristol, you were about to say something? Uh, after taking that damage, I want to cast uh, Telekinesis and then lift myself up out of sure. this if it's possible. Awesome. Okay. So, Dan. I'm probably wasting a spell on this. But you well. cast a spell magic, and it's almost for a second. A little bit of hearing comes back, but then the silence immediately collapses back onto you. Oh, wow. Even a 29 is not enough? Yeah, there's some funky stuff going on down here. <sighs> so, Ristol. Up you go, and all of a sudden, Ristol comes floating out of the ground, and another Ristol spawns and walks across the room. Well, I guess with that in mind, I'll use another one of my abilities, which grants me flight, wind in darkness, or dim light. Well, who, and I'll who, just who, who's out. still down there? Yeah, me. You, you could use that, I guess. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I could probably lift people up because I have this for 10 minutes, but. But you would have to find them. You'd have to find yeah. me. So, Grimgar, it, you said some words there that I think are very important. You can fly in dim light or darkness. Yeah, I don't know how lit, I how well lit was the area outside of here before. It was lit. Light. Yeah, it was, it well, was lit. well lit. Oh well. So yeah, if you fly straight up, either. you're gonna fly right into light and go right back down. Yeah, but maybe he can at least find where the edge is. If you want to start feeling around for the edge now, Bert, you <laughs> threw your hook back in there, right? Yep. Yep. Dan, high or low? Uh, we'll just go with the low because eventually it's got to be bad. Well, if, if he flies up and I see him, I want to grab him with the my telekinesis. Well, that's up that to you, work. Dan, if you want to try and fly. But you know, if you broach the edge, your fly spell is going to break immediately. Yeah, I'll double check what exactly the rule is on that. Uh, As... Grimgar, you feel something brush up against your back, dealing you nine points of acid damage. Oh no. It's like this lonely oh. cat with an acid tongue just loving on you. Okay, yeah. it doesn't say it runs out, <laughs> it just says only when I am in dim light or darkness I can give myself 
like oh well, it lasts that's, for one minute if that's the how it's worded then yeah. yeah you take that nine damage you're like i gotta go and you cast it on yourself and whoop all of a sudden grimgar comes flying out of the floors another grimgar spawns and walks to the base of the wall and starts waving for levi and bjorn to come on over along with like 30 people over there by this point I, I guess since i have flight for now maybe i'll just move up to the top of the wall that is absolutely something you can do so now you're up at the top of the wall with silas and the knight this wall is about a foot thick and you can look down the other side it's about a 40 foot drop and then there's a opening a passage moving on I just want to say I'm very sorry for not coming back down there, but I don't understand what the hell was going on. Uh, magic. I Strong hate magic. magic. Uh, Ristol, can you levitate over there? Yeah, so uh, I can move. Yeah, so I want to levitate to the top, and then anybody who needs assistance, I will also pull them because I can target a new creature. I have this for 10 minutes. So okay. amazing. So you can target Bjorn or Levi and then Bjorn I'll or Levi. I'll just reverse my grapple. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm just like time. magnetoing them all over the place and, and so, I'll lower myself down on the other side. And, now Bjorn, yeah. you're about 80 feet to this wall. Well, you're right at the edge of where this floor does whatever it's doing. So we're going to say you're about mm. 60 feet to this okay. wall. All right. Well, it's 100 feet of rope. So yeah. with the grapple to get at the top of the wall and just climb it. Yeah, you're strong enough. I'm not going to make you roll. You just speedball this grappling hook and it pings against the wall behind, you know, the wall and you let it drop and it hooks. You know, if you just swing over, you're going to be cutting into this magical floor. How are you wanting to... Do you want to try and secure it to something so you could like underhand climb up the rope or what's your plan? Hmm. Actually, I can, uh, I mean, I can run with it a little bit and just make it jump. Um, I mean, my long jump is really impressive if I uh, do it that way. I don't know if that's enough to clear it. What's your long jump? It's over 20 feet. I'll tell you what, you, yes, we're going to say yes, um, yeah. but high or low? Um, no. Oh. Okay. I oh, rolled high. Oh my god. You leap. I rolled low once. You leap with this rope and you're pulling the rope as you're going and you hit as high as your jump's going to take you. You start swinging down and you swing down through this magical floor and you swing right into something that's got a lot of resistance to it and it starts burning. <laughs> Instantly take 27 points of acid damage. Oh my god. Oof. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> and then you're gonna need to give me a strength save to pull yourself out. Alright, well I've got uh I've got advantage on strength saves. Yep. 18. Yeah, that's fine. You pull yourself out, your clothes and everything, they're sizzling and steaming from whatever you hit. Uh, but eventually you climb to the top of this wall. So everyone's on the top of this wall. It's 40 feet down. You can see where the opening is. Bjorn starts, you know, mostly naked to begin with. Cause. <laughs> so now he's just free balling it up there. Oh my gosh. It's just all just melted off. Oh man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I will immediately use prestidigitation to just kind of uh, kind of <laughs> snap and just just put something a loincloth, a banner, a <laughs> crudely wrapped bit of cloth around him. It it doesn't actually exist. It's just a it's just it's, an illusory object. But it, it's not that we don't respect your culture and heritage. It's just that's that's a lot of free balling going on. <laughs> it's, like, it's a lot of wang to hang. Okay. You're at the top of the wall. What's the plan? Well, whatever we do, I think we should go straight for the door. No going to the floor. Agreed. Especially if we have somebody that has like 10 minutes worth of amazing. So yeah. Yeah. Can I levitate yeah, us levitate all down, down and never touch the floor? Yeah. Those <laughs> of you who can levitate slash fly, whatever the ability is. Yeah. Or you just right on in. Yeah. Chuck, while I'm still at the top of the wall, yeah. I'm going to take another handful of my ball bearings and just toss them out again, see what happens when they hit the floor on this side of the wall. They disappear. 
Oh. As they hit the That's floor, they disappear. Good to know. Good thinking. Uh, I will communicate that to everybody. Yeah, I mean, you can all see it. Like, ball bearings, they're falling for 40 feet and just shh, nothing. Hmm. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> I think just for funsies, I'm going to take out a flask of holy water and just whip it into the trap as hard as I can. You whip the holy water down and it disappears. Yep. And I'll just shout, suck on that. <laughs> okay. So I guess the question, will, uh, yeah, for those of you who can't, go ahead. for those of you who can't levitate slash fly, how are you getting down to this opening? Well, I mean, he can levitate us down, right? Well, and that's what I was asking. I can hold like a thousand pounds. Oh, so. wow. Yeah. Well, then that bypasses all of this. Yeah. You They're, just okay. <laughs> levitate people down one at a time and you all make it out of this strange room um we are at time i'm good to keep going so i'll leave it up to you uh, do we want to keep going for a little bit or do we want to call it here i'm fine either way uh i probably have like 30 40 minutes i could keep going i'm cool bert i'm fine yeah we'll go for 30 40 minutes yeah so you all move down the hallway. Eventually. I'm going to take one of my potions before we go. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. You did take a lot of damage right there. Oh, actually, I was going to say, how, how are we on healing? Because I could do like a mass cure wounds if we want. But... Uh, I know Ristol took some damage. Dan, you took a little bit. Bjorn took a good chunk. Uh, let's see. I'm finding the words for the next room. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to hold off on that if you're going to cast a spell. Oh, that's why I'm asking how everybody's yeah. on, on health, because if uh, everybody's got some damage, it might be... I'm like 20% down. I, I think it's okay, but whatever. Just want to explore some more. Agreed. This place is terrible in all the right ways. <laughs> it's, what, 3, 3d8 plus 10, so... That's a lot. Probably probably 13 health I can give everybody. Uh, let's wait until we find a lich or something. Okay. 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 And okay. when we get our crap kicked in, All right. bust so, that out. Yeah. Bjorn, if you want to take I, your potion. I will say while he's healing up as well, um, I will just kind of fly down to where I'm hovering above the, the floor facing the wall that we just went down on this side. Yeah. And I'll use a prestidigitation to make a mark on the wall that just has an arrow pointing down saying no floor in very clear letters. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. You do. Nice. Uh, so as you all healing, I'm going to start talking a little bit. Finally, you pull open a wide door and, and stop short at the awe-inspiring sights before you. As you stand at the open gr uh, gates of a vast cathedral-like chamber, this vaulted ceiling's a hundred feet up, uh, rooms at least a thousand feet wide, and you can tell from the sparkling torch sconces extending far, far into the distance that it's probably at least like a thousand, two thousand feet long. Now this brightly illuminated, um, now there's a brightly illuminated massive translucent hourglass that floats midair just below the ceiling. Its crimson sands are just now starting to fall. As you look around, all four walls, or all the walls you can see are covered in doors. Hundreds of doors, if not thousands. Uh, mm. Anybody got any ideas walls. on this? Somebody want to throw a ball bearing? You know, roll that down the floor and see if it rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. Yeah, I'll throw I'll throw a handful of ball bearings forward, kind of rolling them on the floor. They act exactly as they're supposed to. Okay, so they just roll forward, All randomly right. rolling around. Uh, okay. Let me point at a door and thaumaturgy it open. I guess. Uh, you move to a door now. 
each one of these doors. Uh, let me make sure I'm about to say the right words. Gosh, hang on. Each of these doors is very odd. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm trying to make sure I say the right thing. So, stone doors. Each of them contains what looks like an odd keyhole. Uh, carved right into the middle of the door, not off to the side, right in the middle. The keyhole is this round orifice. It's about two inches in diameter that narrows after about two inches, but it seems to extend about six inches deeper into the door after that. So this like two inch disc, after mm -hmm. about two inches, it narrows down and then keeps going for a little bit. A cone almost or kind of yeah but as you thaumaturgy a door there's absolutely no effect well um and you said that the hourglass just started to run like yeah a... like your uh, presence here activated or something i don't know it's weird yeah i don't know it's weird <laughs> so weird so good <laughs> What well, does do the wanna... ceiling look like, Chuck? This huge, vaulted, cathedral-like ceiling, like 100 feet up. Are there, like, yeah. pillars, or is it, like, a open structure? Like, are, is there anything else other than these doors? So, no, it's just this giant dome, you know, vaulted ceiling with this giant, clear hourglass floating midair and just all of these doors. Actually, let me... Um, I have a map for this. It's not a On good map. On a scale map. of 1 to 10, how bad is my idea to shoot the hourglass? I think that's a wonderful idea. Um, well, let, You're let, so let bad. Me get, let bad. me check it out first. <laughs> let me check it yeah. out first. Don't, don't do that when we're on the room. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. there's a, a rough representation of the room. Okay. Chuck, I'm going to take some time, my imp and I, to fly up close to the hourglass, not right up to it. Okay. But maybe like 15, 20 feet away from it. Sure. Uh, once I get close enough to it, I'm just going to kind of gently take one of the ball bearings and just kind of lob it at it. I'm not trying to hit it hard enough to do damage or anything. I'm just wanting to see if it plinks off of it. It does. Or what happens. You throw it, it plinks, nothing happens. This red sand is still going. Great. Um, I'm going to have my imp go up to the hourglass and just start kind of pushing on the top edge of it. Because I'm assuming the top and bottom are flat, yeah. as if every hourglass would sit on a table or something. And just start kind of pushing on it midair, see if, it, if there's any way to rotate it while it floats. So your imp starts pushing, and it doesn't give. Give me like a strength test for your imp. Ooh, okay. Um... Fourteen. Your imp pushes and pushes, and maybe it just moves just like a centimeter, mm. but it's not tipping. The entire thing just shifts. Hmm. Ah, okay. So it just it, moves. Is your imp named Salt or Peppa when it goes to push it? <laughs> 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 very good very good I, um, I guess well it's got to be salt because pep is a pig <laughs> oh wow oh, we no, went to no. student no. cartoons or not student children <laughs> get out of here uh, um, well, I hope they're stu often students I don't know I how I feel either. about that because I like salt and Peppa, but I also like Peppa the pig so I mean like is that just a win all around I don't I don't know it is. All pigs are magical creatures. They make so many delicious, delicious things. So, what's going on? I'm going to so, turn, as he's investigating the, the hourglass, I'm just going to turn right, head to that wall, uh, like jog, run over there, and just examine one of these doors. Sure, give me a wisdom save. To... A wisdom save? Oh, crap. You have an <laughs> advantage on it. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah you Swag. do. 
Because I double ate that ones. Castlevania wall meat. All right, sixteen. That's okay. As you're running, depressing. all of a sudden you hear a whisper, just like right in your ear. Beware the raven's maw, and for that matter, it's caw. And you stop, like, what the hell? But you don't see anything. You just heard it real quick, just like this whisper in your ear. Are you going to keep going, doing what you're going to do? And what's what's happening? Does this change your action? I'm going to plug up my ears with my fingers and then keep jogging over there. Okay. You jog over and you make it to a door. Is there an image of a raven by any chance on this door? No. Same thing as what I described to Dan earlier. Large stone door with this strange hole directly into the center. I will take my off hand, my left hand, and I will put it into the hole in the door. Okay. Um, nothing happens. Okay. Whew. <laughs> um... I'll uh, look back to the others and I'll uh, tell them that I heard a voice saying to beware the raven's maw and its caw. Okay. I don't know what that means, but... Uh, I may just kind of walk around a little bit, like in the middle area, and just look around and see if I can find something that would unlock a door. Perception test. Um... Yeah, didn't the old man say something about a key on the floor? Um, scattered about the crystal tomb with no door. But it said that's on level three, so I don't know what that means. I assume we're not on level three. No, probably not. So, Eddie, you and your imp, uh, the night, you and your imp notice you're maybe like halfway through the sand by now. Oh, well, uh, if I it gets close to running out, we need to get out, I think. But... So, what's going mm. on? Maybe Jeremy can leave his, his skin buddy in there and then we can all leave. I, I'm i glad to help however I can, but I I need the guidance of s smarter people. <laughs> I, do, do you want me to push on the hourglass? I, I, no, no, I, I mean, know. like, when, when the sand runs out, like, we're all out here and, oh. and, your, and your skin suit is in there. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. Just leave my skin suit in there to observe what happens. Yeah pretty much it so i mean look around while we got time and then get out when we don't it's true i could actually just be doing that right now because i can send him out to a thousand feet and just like have him like careening around and just looking sure you send your skin suit out way out there in this giant room what are the rest of you doing i'm gonna look around I'll start heading close. back to the door yeah. i was just gonna look around close to the door and if the hourglass is getting low I'll come out Mm -hmm. I gave I gave you a twenty three on perception there. Uh, what were you percepting again? Remind me. I was looking for like a key. Oh yeah, something. you don't find something. anything. Okay. Not smart enough for this room. Does the hourglass touch the floor? No, it's floating. It's large. I mean, it's like maybe like ten feet in from one edge to the other, but it's floating maybe like fifty, sixty feet up in the air. Okay, I'm gonna take a few deep breaths. You know, hold out my arms like this, kind of kneel down, stretch out my hammies, and then I'm going to sprint across this large chamber. Okay, cool. Uh, give me a wisdom test. Wisdom save. I'm sorry. All right. With advantage, mercifully. And actually, Bristol and Grimgar, go ahead and give me those as well. Okay. Levi, you hear a whisper in your ear. Talichia's bane is true death. Um, Levi, that was your Grimgar. To alter your fate, up is down, left is right. In that chamber, mundane is might. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna have to. Chuck, I want to slowly walk across the floor so that I'm underneath the hourglass, and like I'm going slow enough that if one foot, you know doesn't I'm reach thinking. resistance that I'm not going to just fall into a pit. You find nothing funky with this floor. All right. When I'm under it, 
Um, I want to throw my grapple up to kind of grab the lead bottom part of the hourglass, and I want to climb up to the hourglass. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's not a problem for you. You're super strong. You launch your grappling hook up. It kind of latches right onto the ledge. You can shimmy up it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ristol, go and give me a save as well. Uh, wisdom what? save. Wisdom save. Gotcha. Yep. Don't forget you've got advantage. Oh, that's right. So, Bjorn, what are you doing when you get up to this? Well, now that I'm up here, um, I want to like carefully look in the glass and the sand that's falling. Is there anything in the hourglass? I give me a perception test. Perception. Uh, Ristol, you don't hear any whispers. Okay. Nineteen. Um, looking at it, no, it's just this very shiny red sand. And actually, you're kind of staring at it for a second. You think maybe it's like powdered ruby or something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> and it has a pivot. How no. tall is this hourglass? It, There's there no, no pivot. It's just this dumb, this giant glass thing with these two bases on it. Maybe like 10 to 12 from the bottom to the top, 10 to 12 feet. Okay. And what is the ceiling? Is there anything interesting on the ceiling? Directly above it, you know, it's probably another 20 feet or so up, and it's just this domed, you know, art so ceiling, just a, just a plain okay. ceiling. You said about 20 feet up. Okay. Um, and there is like a cap on top of yeah. the hourglass. Yeah. All right. I should be able to just do a standing jump, grab the rim. I want to be now on top of the thing. Sure. And once I'm up there, I'm gonna test if the ceiling is real or not. I'll just throw my grapple up, not trying to hook anything, but to see if it goes through the ceiling or if it actually hits. Yeah, the there's a hard ping as your grappling hook hits the ceiling. Okay. Uh, maybe there's a couple of minutes left. Uh, I'm probably gonna start moving to exit for now. Okay, so Grimgar, you exit the room. I'm going to stay up him. here with the consideration so did that... You, did you go back, or did we open a door? No doors have been opened so far. Uh, Grimgar tried to thaumaturgy a door open, and it failed. So can I see through the keyhole? Is there... I'll just pick a random door. Like, you, how big are the keyholes? They're two inches at the start, and it narrows down to about an inch. You peer into it. It doesn't seem like it goes through. Hmm. But it's weird. It's wide on the outside and narrow on the inside. The so kind of because I can turn into some slime and try to go through that, but if it doesn't go anywhere, it's not gonna. Yeah, yeah it's not gonna work. It's a good idea. So it's like uh, kind of give or take a rough thing of this. So this uh, this is the outside of the door here, on where that crude O is. But yeah, it's kind of shaped like that. So, Ristol, you're checking out a door. Levi, what are you doing? Um, Not you, buddy. My youngest I thought I was talking to him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll turn. Uh, see. I'll see where everybody else is at. Um. I'll try to congregate, or I'll try to get to a point where I'm kind of in in the middle of where everybody else is, positionally speaking. Okay. I'll just sprint to that position and hold cool. that place. Okay. Uh, the knight? Uh, I've moved back to the door and seeing, uh, Grimgar. seeing Grimgar move out of it. Okay. I, go ahead, I go ahead and step out with my imp as well. Silas? Well, I suppose my role is to bear witness to what happens if you stay in here like an imbecile. So are you staying inside as well? My echo will, not me. Okay, I can so... see through him. <laughs> All right. The uh, Chuck, real quick. Yeah. Um, so I am staying in the room, figuring yeah. that if there's anything safe in this room, is probably the hourglass. I'm going to cling to it pretty low. But I want to look through the glass of the hourglass to see the room. Does it still look exactly the same, or does it act as a filter and other than maybe being knock out some your, of those doors? Other than your vision being warped by the glass, yeah, it looks the same. Yeah. 
As the last bits of dust fall through the hourglass, there's suddenly a blinding light in the room. Oh, Everyone who is in the room, so Bjorn, Ristol, Levi, and Silas's meat clone, as your vision kind of comes to, now the people who are outside, the door slams shut. The people who are in the hallway are standing there as the door slams shut. I don't know what's going on, but to those of you inside, all of a sudden you find yourselves back in the room with the eight doors. Ah. Oh man. <sighs> so that sucks. The party is thoroughly split at this moment. Oh man. Ah. Oh. Now, Silas, you would have this communication between your fake Silas and you, right? Well, once I lose, uh, at a certain point, once like it's fully cut me off from me being able to see it, because I do need line of sight for my Oh, yeah. You're... So once it's cut off, like maybe I know something weird is happening, but then as it splits. Yeah. As this door shuts and this blinding light flashes, your meat Silas vanishes. I have terrible news. They're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we don't know that for sure, but in case they are, well, we no, should Levi, probably try to find her. Levi, you're not there. Oh. It's just Grimgar, Silas, and the Knight. Well, Levi, well. Ristel, and Bjorn are back in the circular Bjorn. room with the eight doors. Yeah. Yes. We did it, guys. So, party again. Um, Split it's so hard. Grimgar, the knight, and Silas, what are you going to do? I mean, did the room open back up, or is it just shut? Yeah, you can open the door again. It opens just fine. Um, and when we do, we find an empty room. Yeah. Does that, oh, is our glass great. reset? Yes, it does. <laughs> well, either we waited out in the room and suffer the same fate or go backwards i mean i suppose well, we, we can it's reset we know we can step into the room and step back out before it, before it resets again so we can at least take some time to try and sort out what's going on with these doors so, knowing that we can step back out and at least we won't disappear out of that room sure. assumedly. each of you be... give me an intelligence test oh no investigation if you want oh no okay. I mean, okay. and this is just Silas the Knight and Grimgar. I'm really good at this, guys. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> so, this is good news. This is a little <laughs> bit of DM <laughs> Weird. hand waving here. You all somehow managed to forget to track the hourglass, and all of a sudden, there's a blinding white light. As you find yourself in the circular room with the eight doors with your missing companions. <laughs> We're not smart ah. enough. So, but it fixes our problem. It fixes my problem. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> as, as, as soon as we appear in the round room with all the doors, uh, because there was a blinding light that I'm expecting since we forgot, lost track of time, caught us by surprise. As soon as I appear, like I've got two daggers out and I'm ready to shiv whoever's in front of me. Yeah, Luckily you see it's your companions. Alright, Bert, high or low? Uh, let's go high this time. 34. Dang I get a low. Of course. Oh. Check, you're just defying the high-low game. I am. Uh, Jordan, high or low? Uh, low. Nope. Dan, high or low? Uh, let's stick with low because that's just how I roll. You got it. Jake, <laughs> high or low? Hi. You got it. Eddie. Oh, hang on. Hi, I Don't guess. look at that one. I'm going to reroll it. <laughs> uh, no, you got a low. And Jeremy. Well, Fuck that, that changes things. Low. Jeremy. You got a low. All right. Those of you who failed, you managed to land on one of those plates. Uh, uh, let's see. So who all oops. failed that? Bert. Jordan, yeah, Eddie, Jake, did you pass it or no? I got it. 
and Jeremy, you did too. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Is I like, like to assume my echo failed on my behalf. <laughs> so okay. need to roll for both of them. <laughs> so, Bert, you're the only one we have to worry about here. As you land on one of the pressure plates that drops one of these orbs directly on your head. Uh, let's see. This is... It's this one. Uh, you're going to need to give me a con save. Sure. Is this a spell-like effect? It is not. This is against some poison. Oh, you're immune uh, to poison. What's that? You're immune to poison. I am. Is From Heroes food? Feast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, Don't oh, worry wow. about it. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> this globe drops on your head, coating you in this liquid, but you're just doesn't do anything. You're fine. Lunch was worth it, I guys. seem to be marinated. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was a fine hour spent. <laughs> okay. And that is where we're going to wrap it tonight. We'll pick back up in okay. two weeks. Continuing from the round room with eight doors. Hmm. You all made it a ways in and then got brought right back to the Some start. Some kind of puzzle. Yeah. Maybe we don't have the right things for that room yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Bert. Where can people find you this week? Uh, this week, catch me at twitch.tv slash Steam Steel Murder. Um, Sunday, I'm not sure what's going on yet. We might have Derp's Traveler. Might just be an unboxing of something fun. But next week, Tuesday is first edition Dungeons and Dragons. Friday is BX Dungeons and Dragons. There we go. Check out the podcast at Blue Magic B L U M A G I K dot com. Very cool. Jordan, anything you want to plug? Yeah, uh, hello, I'm Jordan with Silent PH in the Middle. Um, I have a D&D YouTube channel that does lore on the Forgotten Realms, Eberron, and other campaign settings, but I actually started another channel uh, called Jordan's Jocular Junction uh, that has uh, a bunch of DCC content thus far, and I'm going to cover some uh, old school essentials that I've been playing and some other stuff like that. So if you're interested in kind of OSR and DCC, you should check out that channel as well. It needs some subscriber love. So go check, go check that it out. That sounds we'll have to awesome. Check that out. If you ever need to talk to someone who knows everything about every game, just hit up Bert over here because Bert okay. knows everything. <laughs> I'm old. I'm just old. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, you want to plug anything? Sure. Yeah. You want to support some independent artists doing a comic book? Check out Black Blizzard on Kickstarter. Why not? There we go. All right. For the rest of us, we're with the Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, swing by our channel, twitch.tv slash Defenders of Cobalt tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Central. We're going we're gonna to be rocking out some uh, Ghosts of Salt Marsh, um, our fifth ed game. You can swing by on Wednesday, every single Wednesday, for our Pathfinder 2 campaign, The Fallen Kingdom of Ruse. Swing by this Thursday at Defenders, and you're going to get uh, Watercolors and Warriors, our Ghibli-inspired fifth ed campaign. And uh, this coming Friday, we're doing a one-shot because Joe usually runs BFRPG on that night, uh, but he's going in for surgery and they're cutting his face in half. So he's not going to be available. Um, <laughs> and then next Saturday, 1 p.m. Central on Defenders, we're doing Forbidden Lands. So we got way too much stuff. Way too much. It's terrible. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you should watch it. But you should watch it. You should watch as... I lose my mind from trying to run all these games. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all later. <laughs>